The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light him up, light him up, light him up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light him up, light him up, light him up, everybody. Saturday, March 16th, 2024. How to Buy Cigars Like a Professional. Ed Santa Maria, cigar buyer for over 25 years for Two Guys Smoke Shop, joins us to tell us how he does what he does and why. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. And you are listening to the Cigar Authority, now in its 14th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. It wasn't easy doings, but we got him here. Ed Santa Maria, thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Are you nervous? No. No. No, We do this all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Just not on camera. I mean, it's not a big deal. This is, uh, but he's the guy behind the guy for sure. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think. You, you've been with us for how long? Since '95, almost so, almost 29 years. 29 years working for one place, and, and that place being me. Mm. So uh, bless you for uh, 29 years. And before you, it's a my, family thing. Yeah, my mom. Your mom, my be- mom. was my first employee, and be- and now your son. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! Three hmm. generations. I don't know. We're all crazy, I think. Psychopaths. <laughs> how does that even happen? But it is crazy that that happens. And how long, um, this is 14 years doing the Cigar Authority. Yes. I just decided to not say no anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Went from no to all right, I'll do it. Uh, and we talked at last year's trade show. Yeah. And you made me wait another eight months. So okay. I think that was like the payback. Well, to- the idea was for, <laughs> you know, let's fit it in the right spot. If we have to wait as long as we did right before the trade show, because this is showtime for you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, lots of work beforehand, lots of work at the show. And, um, you know, then after it's craziness that ends up happening after that. So I think it's perfect timing uh, to. To, to talk about what you do uh, and, and take more time away from you, which is a couple hours anyway, but maybe um, other shops are listening and you can give them some uh, advice. As the owner of the company, I obviously did it for years and years till I could have somebody become the buyer of it um, and so that everybody understands what the what that entails to do is it's a, it's a two let a word, but it's so hard as you get to know these people, and that word is no. So part of your job is no, right? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> you, you struggle with that word, but um, yeah, I've been able to, to not only be able to say that word, but give reasons why, and it's not, we can get into it as yeah. we go along, but uh, you know, a lot of other stores around the country will say, yeah, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. If I say I'm thinking about it, I'm actually thinking about it, because right. if I don't want to do it, I'll tell you. I don't want to waste your time but, or my time. Right. But, Ed, what if they cry? It has happened. Yeah. With him more than with me. I don't know. They, I don't, know. they don't tend to cry in front of me. I don't no, know No, but then Dave breaks I down. break. Yeah. I, I knew I had to <laughs> Maybe that's up. why they cry, because <laughs> yeah. they know they'll get away with it with him. And, and it's true that I knew somebody could do this better than me, because I struggle with it so much, because this is so important to the other person in there. But in the meantime, our company ends up getting hurt for having all the stuff that can't it's, be sold. It's business. It's yeah. business. And I have great relationships with companies we do great business with. Yeah. And I have great relationships with companies we don't do great yes. business with. Or some we don't. You know, you, you go to every booth. Sometimes I avoid some booths. We stop doing business with them. <laughs> I feel so funny. And then you say, I'll be right back. And boom, you shoot in. And then I say, he's right. Even you the gotta, companies that stop doing business with us, I walk mm, right up and I say, how's yes. it going? How you doing? <laughs> 
You know, we're all we're in the same game here, yeah, right? Yeah. So it, it is good. You're a better man than me. There's no doubt about it. And everybody's going to learn that as the show goes <laughs> on. But uh, right now, let's uh, light up a cigar, Jonathan. What do we have here? Well, Dave, today's first cigar is the Artista Midnight Robusto. It is manufactured in the Dominican Republic by Artista Cigars. The size we're smoking is a 5 by 54 It is wrapped in an Ecuadorian Habano dark wrapper. The binder, get this, Ecuadorian shade. You don't see that used as a binder very often. The fillers are from Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, and the USA. It is part of the Cigar Authority care package. A single is $10.39, and a box of 20 is $183.99, dropping the single price down to just $9.20 on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Uh, I remember this a year ago of saying to you, hey, I have a list here of things that I'd be interested in, and this was one of them. And you said, yeah, we already bought it. Mm-hmm. So you bought it before the trade show even happened. Well, and it, they showed it to me at TPE. Okay, that's so right. So I bought it at TPE last okay. year. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, and here it is. Right now it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, <laughs> they stand for quality, <laughs> tradition, and excellence. I was, I was late, but I cut my cigar early because I'm that guy that drinks before the toast, I guess. I, yeah. yeah, it's messed up. And you, you, being live in the audience, you hear everybody doing yeah. it, and isn't it something? And and, and it, it just happened, you know, organically. It didn't. It wasn't a planned thing. It's weird, but it's there, and it makes me smile every time I hear it. Honey, wheat bread, but just the outside crust. It's a little, a little crusty. Just the outside on the honey wheat bread is the cold draw. Are you into these flavor no things that he ends up saying? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a lot of what he's saying, but kind of, sort of. I get it. <clears throat> I absolutely get it. I cold draw this bad boy as part of the care package of a thousand years. Taste it before you light it, and you give it to him, right? We're going to light our cigar today with the Blizzard by Vertigo. The Blizzard by Vertigo features single action. Mm, <laughs> really? <laughs> It is a double act. Nope, I do one thing, and, and everything happens. And, and, and then two things happen. I do one thing, and, and everything happens. happens. Three jets come alive, fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. You got easy adjustment at the bottom, all for the low price of $9.99. If you don't own 37 of these lighters and have them strewn about your house and property, you're out of your mind. It's the Blizzard by Vertigo. I'm seeing uh, price increases on accessories coming through mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, these are on things. everything. Yeah. You, you have gone through the trade show before alone. Yes. You started going with me, and I showed you this is how we do it. And then we did it together, and then you've done it by yourself. And now I'm back, and I'm going with you. What is the best one? Well, there are some advantages to going alone because I, I, I make this joke all the time. I'm the most forgettable guy in the cigar industry. Nobody knows who I am. They know who you are. Yeah. Everybody knows who you are. But me, they forget. I mean, we've had dinners with people, um, for instance. Yeah, they introduced themselves to you again. And they, the next morning. Yes. Three <laughs> hours I sat next to somebody. The next morning he introduces himself to me. I'm like, we talked for three hours last night. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, and I have many stories like that. But So it has its advantages that way. because I can get around faster. Blend in, get around faster, uh, talk to who I want to talk to. Get and, on an elevator. You know, and not have to worry. Yeah. Nobody asks me to sign anything. They ask me to sign <laughs> yeah, things yeah. and talk to them and tell them stories. And um, they want you to sign the PO. The yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. It it dawned on me this morning. I'm thinking I'm going to have you on and stuff. And and as much as my wife does a really good job spending my money, you are the champion mm. by far. Thank you. You spend more of my money than anybody ever has in the world. And I don't even go as far as with the years that you have in there. You might have bought more cigars than anybody in the world ever. Quite possibly, yeah. The biggest buyer of cigars in the world, because it's all the years that he has, is there people that buy more than us? Possibly. Mm. Uh, But the years of of doing it, I don't think it can be caught. And your accuracy level is so remarkable because I can't tell you the number of times that someone has said, I would like four boxes of Perdomo bourbon barrel aged champagne, I mean, uh, bourbon barrel aged sun grown. Uh, And I go in there and there isn't four. 
They're six. Right. How much am I going to owe you per compliment today? So no, that, what kind of what, what kind of tally I'm yeah. bringing up? You just keep them tallied. I'll will give you, you the take bill a check at the end. At the end? Yeah, right. I will. Okay. He right. gives you the nays, though. You get phone calls and oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Stuff. Of course, of course. So you, not, I'm not perfect. No, not perfect. Nobody's but. perfect, but I, I got to say, I'm grateful when I walk in and the product that I need is there, and when it isn't, it's such an anomaly. Well, yeah. it, uh, we're studying the numbers, and it's not just you know flying and guessing and right. throwing stuff at the wall. It's it's yeah. all educated guesses. Do, do, on an <laughs> ongoing thing, it's, it's educated guesses helped by the computer and sales analysis mm -hmm. that ends up happening. But going to a trade show of buying a new product that we didn't have before becomes a educated guess, uh, looking at the price, looking at what the cigar right. is, how it's going to move, whatever. Especially when in, we're talking earlier today about a limited product that does X amount of cigars, boxes is going to be made. Here's what they're going to do. We have the information here. Okay, what are we going to actually do with this? How many? Based on this or whatever, and I say this, and he says that, and I go, most of the time I go with you, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I leave it to you at the end of it. You're the, you're the final decision maker. Um, and, you know, obviously we want as many as we can sell, but we don't want a whole bunch left over. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it, too, besides the numbers, it's history. It's knowing you know, seeing what brands like that have done in the past, yes. what brands from those companies have done in the past, how we've been able to expand, you know, expand the footprint with those brands and what we do well with and what we don't. And it's not, again, it's not just guessing and, and yeah. saying, oh, I like the way that this looks. It doesn't matter what I like. Yeah, yes. Wait, That's right. Wait a minute. I have a question. Last year, didn't you use your one, one? <laughs> on candles that I never saw we show never up? We never even got them. I, I, we never even got them, and I used my one on a vacuum cleaner. So Right. Yeah. But that broke. <laughs> no, mine still works. Well, okay. you, you guys all <laughs> Mine's fixed. We're all set. Mine's okay. awesome. Though. So what year did you start Two Guys Smoke Shop? 95. 1995, got out of high school. Uh, did a year in college. Okay. And uh, went to school for a year, and they said, you probably shouldn't live here anymore. Oh. Because you kind of aren't doing it. Yeah. So I said, okay, and decided to go to school um, to commute. And then I met you in the summer. Well, I met, I knew you for years anyway. Yeah. He was old. But you I left. saw you in the summertime in August. I think, you, I think you were seven or eight years old when your mom started working. I, I think I was around, yeah, about eight years old, eight, yeah. nine years old. Ride your bicycle, and we, yep. we had baseball cards, and we'd, oh, Eddie's here. Give him some baseball cards. It's amazing that, it, you know, those that saw me post a picture of Ed Sullivan 25 years ago, but Ed, I, I think of you of... My God, Mar Marie's little boy, and it, you know, it's just amazing how where, the, where is the time oh, gone? Now Dave will cry. And this is what happened. Look, this is a, <laughs> Wait a minute, my, my mom's name was Marie too. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And they had Eds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So was your dad an Ed? Yes. Oh, so was mine. All right then. Wow. Are you guys the same? Are you a, are you a junior? Yes. Oh shit. Me too. Wow. Look at this. It's all wow. going together. That's what the type said, of people I, said I like. Shit. Can I say shit? You, you yeah. can say what you oh, want. Okay, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> so why did you work? It wasn't like we were in your neighborhood any longer. By the time, like your mother lived around the, you and your mother lived around the corner from our Somerville store. Yeah. At that point, I moved to Everett in East Boston, and we had sold that Somerville store. And actually, and I know it's against the law, but I actually sold it with your mother was part of the deal. Correct. <laughs> that he said, I'll take it if she can stay. Yeah. And I said, I can't. You're going to have to ask her. <laughs> um, but she ended up staying there. But you ended up coming instead of into that neighborhood store all the way. An in interesting first day. Do you remember the first day? I do. I'm not going to tell any of those stories. Yeah. Oh, well, you're not even talking about the two. I'm probably thinking. Oh, about. I'm, <laughs> Jesus. I'm talking. So I'm about, not you tell both are them. telling me those stories <laughs> he, after the show's over. I went to he the thought, wrong yeah, he went to the wrong store. I, I went to meet him at the wrong store, so oh. I went. I don't know which one, but I was at one. You went to Everett. I went to East Boston. Okay, I think, or vice versa. I don't yeah, know what happened. But anyway, and were you, we got there. Are you still wrong? Did you pick the wrong store? Yeah, yeah no, actually, he's the, that was the, the, probably the first and only time he said I was wrong ah. in 29, 29 years. <laughs> All right. Um, so that was your dream job as a little kid. I want to work for two guys smoke shop. <laughs> it wasn't the so fire. I, I worked at that other place, too, after it was sold. I worked there for a little while in it, that. Oh, really? Okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I did some other things, but my dream job, I wanted to play in the NBA. Okay. But it didn't a little happen. too short, and I... Lacked all the talent. So, okay. Just, um, and then you work, You went to college while you worked for me, which was a long stretch. It was a long stretch. Like I said, at the first year, they asked me not to come back. 
And then I said, no, no, I'm coming. And I started going there um, commuting and working with you part-time. Sorry, can you hear me better? There we go. So I started commuting and working with you part-time. And then after that semester, they said, no, really, you, you shouldn't come here anymore. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, no, I'm going to finish what I started. And that was kind of my wake-up call um, that I had to get my shit together. Yeah. So I... This is uh, for accounting. Started, well, that's another <laughs> story, too. Started working full-time with you uh, and going to school part-time. And I finished over seven and a half years. <laughs> So my ongoing joke at home with my wife is when she asks me a legal question or a medical question, I say, I went to school for seven and a half years, but I'm not a doctor or right. a lawyer. <laughs> um, and um, so when you asked me the question about um, what did I want to do, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be an accountant. Yes. Uh, I excelled at that in high school. I got scholarships and awards. And I was a great student in high school, but I got to college and I had to try. And it was kind of a, right. dis a disconnect there. Yeah, came came natural. And numbers do because you look at things and there's, and not, not, you know, here's 12 months of running numbers of a certain size of a certain brand of it. And you look at it and you go, well, it averages about three and a half. So we should keep, keep you know, when I go How? seriously and then I run the numbers <laughs> and it's like, wow, you can look at it and you do have that magic thing or whatever it is with a running total of numbers to know around how much that is. It's, it's yeah, I've always, thank you. I've always just yeah. had that, that. But well, I, there was so much theory. I went to the first year of accounting and there was so much theory and they wanted me to write two pages about why this was that and this was that. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So I changed to marketing. That's what I got my degree yeah. in. Um, but I've always loved numbers. I just want to be on the numbers side of things and not the... So a buyer, it's, it's yeah. numbers and yeah. it's prices. No, and, it works and, for me. And a, a very expensive order comes in and you look at it and you say, something looks wrong here. Just, I don't know, let's jump off the page to you of something that doesn't look quite right. That's uh, some of the magic sauce that happens uh, with a buyer. I, I mm -hmm. to see something that, okay, that doesn't make any sense because you honestly, you're really good at it. Um, um, so... Uh, good with numbers. You start um, buying cigars. Uh, I estimated that you have bought $250 million <laughs> worth of cigars, a quarter of a billion dollars. So I saw that number and I thought about it because I thought it was Dave Math yeah. at first, which is a term that we use here. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> um, and then I thought about it and I think it's pretty spot on. Yeah. yeah I Based started going over years, and I'm like... He has bought a quarter of a billion dollars worth of cigars. Hmm. So if there's somebody out there that well, has he, bought more, let us know. He can also cheat because he has that, that graph that goes all the way back to true, the beginning. So he that's can true. look and say, okay, this is what we bought. That is a crazy number. And, mm -hmm. and here we go to, to the next show. But My question actually is for you, Dave. Yeah. You are type A personality. You uh, like to be in control of everything that you're around. What was that like the first time that Ed went to a trade show without you? And that, what, that did you hard. have anxiety over that? Yeah. So being, he, he was taking, over, taking charge be, way before that, but I was there anyway. So he placed orders for lots of things. Uh, and there was, I don't know if you remember, we were at a trade show and a giant order came in for something that we, we ordered a hundred of something or whatever, and a hundred cases came in. That was a miscommunication at the yes. beginning. <laughs> yes. We <laughs> ended up with a thousand and not a hundred. Yeah. So some of these things that ended up happening that were astronomical, end of the world things that we got through, but um, that's what I was worried about of, uh, you know, some error being done of, notice, you know, 15 to a case. Oh, I thought I was buying by the ones or something like that. Okay. So I think on that one, uh, let me look at all your sheets and stuff and, and go through it. And free. I don't even look at this stuff. I have no idea <laughs> what ends up happening anymore. And it's hard to believe. No. That yeah, I, I've I, seen you pick up the phone and call Ed and say, did we order this? Yeah. He yes, has no this idea. Is why. And yeah, yeah. Um, so you were a buyer. What year did you start buying, you think? I the, think it was 96, 97. All right. Um, so the boom is going. The boom is going. And during the boom, there were no back orders. There were, so we called everybody every day. Mm -hmm. You know, do you have this? Do you have that? I'll take this. I'll take that. Trying to get as much product as we could because it was really, really tough yeah. at the time. And then when it, it falls apart, everything changes dramatically at that point. And then it's like, okay, inventory levels and things like that go on. Now you did it 100% through the COVID thing. Yes. Which, was that a like that? 
No, because at the beginning it was, what are we going to do? And we had conversations yeah. about it. How are we going to handle this? What do we do? Do we put the brakes on? Can we, we stay open? Do, can we stay open first? And then do we put the brakes on? Do we hit the panic button? No. Business yeah. as usual. Because at the end of this thing, we don't know which direction that's going to go in. Luckily for us, it went in the direction it went in. Yeah. But I didn't want to be on the short end of the stick and not have the product that I knew we could get at the time that yeah. we weren't going to be able to get down the road. Yeah. The, the, if, the, if we can't get it, that's because the manufacturer can't get right. it. Therefore, people are going to still want it. So I remember going through the whole psychology of it. People are going to be smoking cigars, right, yeah, after this is over, right? Manufacturers aren't planting. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. We have to buy. You know, it's like, do we stop buying? Should we do the same? Or should we buy more? Because uh, they're shut down, too. So yes. while, while they have it in stock, we should get it yeah. just in case. Yeah. Um, so one thing that was going on in my day of buying cigars is I would place an order, and then the order would come in, and I was getting receiving different things than I ordered and more than I asked for. The terminology was padding the order. Mm -hmm. More or less, does that happen anymore? doesn't happen with us. Does it still happen in the industry? Yes. Yeah. Does it happen with us? I would say no. Um, Purchase orders. But you can ask some of the people that got the Fuente book about that. <laughs> yes, yes. And, uh, you don't can, have a book yet? They can answer, no, we don't have a book. <laughs> they can answer that question better than me, but it doesn't happen um, at all. We order a lot of cigars, and we want what we order. Yep. And, uh, and one, I'm not picking on any person in particular, but people have told you when I've been standing next to you that, yeah, Ed, you're doing it wrong. And I'm like, well, you're talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> Uh, this guy is spot on of how he does it, but they want to change the way we do it. Right. And there are some people with unique production schedules. Yes. That because they do something different, think that we should do something different. But you know what? Over the course of time, having an understanding of how they do business and how we do business, we've been able to really get rid of any of the issues. That yeah. We have. So you make it work however yeah. magic way you end up doing it. You're going to be like an impossible guy to replace because uh, it's, it's just... You know that one, you know, this just isn't a way, but there's different ways different people do it, and you chameleon through each one of these ways. Well, it takes patience, <laughs> understanding, which I've had to develop over the years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I've seen you did get you, mad at, at some of them. Did you <laughs> learn that from Dave, the patience? No. 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 <laughs> no. Um, keeping cigars in stock for customers, so your inventory levels that you end up having is is based on uh, no no and but you know Ed is a buyer for the entire company, which goes into a warehouse, and then he's also the buyer for each individual store. So Jonathan is in ordering cigars for his store. Ed is doing that too, based on the inventory total inventory he has in refilling three stores at the same time. The online version also, so it's all these things at once. So you look at you. You, are you constantly looking at the change of, okay, I keep sending him eight boxes a week of this certain yep. thing, and because it's down that low and there's only 10, I need to make his 10 number become a 12 or... or yeah, and I look at movement, too, on, on a weekly basis, and you know sometimes even sooner if there's stuff that's moving a little faster. And I, I give him a heads up if all of a sudden uh, customer X is now switching from this brand to this brand, or they move One over... One individual customer. Mm -hmm. Well... Some of these customers are buying four, five, six boxes. So if if the customer goes from uh, Presidente Maduro down to Principe Maduro, we're going to end up with a shitload of Presidente Maduro. So I need to let him know. Listen, Person X switched. Heavy user. Yeah, yeah. Go. So let, let's go say that the level on that item was three. If now this person's buying three every week, it needs to obviously go. Yeah, right yeah. And God forbid, and God forbid, Ed Sullivan passes away. No. We, we got some changes to make, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a heavy user. Things are going to yes. change. That's going to change. Especially on small patterns. cigars. And, and yeah. 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 Absolutely. I'm not going to have to buy as many HBC half Coronas <laughs> as I have. Been. And all in all, uh, it, with the computer changes that happen all these years, and we switch computer programs and yeah. stuff, it's easier or better? Um, it's the same. Okay. It's, it's similar. I mean, it does similar things. Um, it's a new program, so I don't want to get into yeah. that side of it, but we're growing and changing some things with that, too. Uh, it's another one of the hats. Can AI replace you? 
Maybe and maybe really? it can no maybe way. it can do it in a funny voice. I don't, I don't really. No way. <laughs> maybe it can buy things as Steven Seagal. I don't. I don't know. All right, we'll see what that ends up doing. Right now, it's time for the question of the week, and that's brought to you by Dunbot and Tobacco and Trust. It's time for the question of the week, brought to you by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, makers of Sobra Mesa, Nike Rita, Sin Compromiso, Wastra de Saca, and a whole bunch of other cigars that don't suck. Dave, your strategy worked out well because Steve did not complain about my voiceover. All right. You remember you said, well, who's he not going to complain about? Ed, you do it. Yes. <laughs> okay, that was a good shot. Yeah. Well, you're his friend. Yeah, I'm we like can't others. say the same about everybody on the no. panel, but no, you're no. his friend. No, he, do you hear what he said? We get along. <laughs> no, no, me. <laughs> that he said, oh, I, you've I, been a friend of his for that long? And he says, yeah. Well, D Ed I, says, Dave, you've been a friend even longer. And he says, no, I used to buy cigars from Dave. Mm. That's an interesting <laughs> answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> what about a jerk? <laughs> he actually, when I saw him last week, he asked me, because we were talking about things, and he said, do you like me? And I oh, said, boy. well, I accept you for who you are. Yeah. That's, I know who you, that's a non -answer. I know who you are. I know how you react to things, and I accept it. I genuinely like him. I like him. I like that he's a dick. <laughs> well, you would. He uh, is a yeah. dick, yeah, but I like him. I, I, you know exactly where you stand with him. I don't know about that. Okay. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page. And, and he's paying for this segment. This is the most beautiful part of it. Of the CigarAuthority.com. And Manny writes, I have about 40 very old Padron Anniversario cigars in a humidor. The humidity has always been at 65%. The temperature is 68 degrees. The cigars have been in the humidor for about two years. I opened That's not very old, but okay, you're trying. <laughs> I opened the humidor and found two cigars covered in mold. Ugh. The rest appeared fine. Any clue? Uh, these cigars are 15 plus years old. Thanks. What? So my it went from two to 15. The cigars are 15 years old. Where were they for the 13 years prior? They have been in his humidor for two years. Okay. Now, given that information, what I think may have happened is that uh, Manny got his information on the internet instead of the Cigar Authority, and he wiped the inside of that humidor down with water, would be one explanation, meaning you flooded the pores of that humidor with too much moisture, and the cigars that are closest to whatever that water pocket is absorbed that and got higher humidity just on those couple. Uh, you'd know if they were the ones that are the closest to the wall that's most often the case. I'm confused about the aging of the cigar, but <laughs> Padron is an interesting aging product because they're one of the few companies that do not age their cigar at all. They wet, uh, put them in trays, and then they ship them into the United States where they take them there and put them into the boxes that they recycle, and then they send them off to the stores and they sell very quickly. So uh, you're not buying old Padrones in a cigar store, most likely. Certainly not at Two Guys, because they, they fly out as, as fast as they come in. Mm -hmm. And we buy an awful lot of them. Um, and what I'll say about Padron is they don't age better, per se. If you keep them for 13 years... They don't get better in 13 years. I think that they diminish their, their flavor of what happens to a Padron. Now, on the mold issue of it, if you have two cigars in your humidor that's mold, you might have all moldy cigars, right? You might, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. But if they're the ones, if you wipe that humidor down two years ago and the two cigars are right up against the edge, they could have absorbed that moisture, and that's where the mold started. So I would take them all out, wipe the inside of your humidor down with distilled white vinegar, let that sit open until the vinegar smell is gone. That'll mitigate Gaze. any mold spores that are inside the pores, and then you can put your cigars back in and throw away start the moldy over. ones. Throw, obviously, least. throw away the moldy ones. Mold is a scary thing, over humidifying. It's, it's the biggest culprit that ends up happening there. Okay, we are smoking the Tobacco and Trust expressly disclaims any liability for the answers provided with no guarantees of accuracy or usefulness, except that our cigars don't suck. Okay, he did that a few times. You got a good one. You got a it. good one. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, that's in case we answered it wrong. Hopefully we answered it correctly. Josh Wright says Ed needs to be a regular. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, got a good personality for it, Ed. I, he knows his shit. My, my son at home would does. disagree. Today is usually Dadder Day, and uh, uh, he was not happy that I left. Oh, that. boy. <laughs> So is, is he watching on, on here? Yes, he's probably already gotten up and tried to get me to get up and get him something off the TV. <laughs> he's yeah. yelling at yeah, the TV. Erin said she was going to record it and see if he did how he reacted to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, early thoughts here on Atista Midnight Robusto, and is there a, a, another version of this coming out this year? At the yes, I don't know how to pronounce it, though. F- oh, Falu. Ah. I, I th- F-A-L-U. Uh-huh. Um, because there's this and there's the... There's the Harvest, the Midnight, and now the Falu. Falu, for huh. lack of better phrasing. That'll look like this and be part of the thing. It's a little reddish. Okay. Mm. Is this a guarantee because this does well for us and so does the Harvest? So that becomes a guarantee or there's no guarantees? No guarantees. No guarantees. We'll see. We'll they, see. We've got to try it, smoke it. The thing I'm going to say about this is it's surprisingly mild. It looks like it's kind of got that Kristoff syndrome where it looks like it's going to be an yeah. absolute powerhouse. You've got that thicker outside broadleaf looking wrapper, which really is imparting some sweetness. Um, I wish that they had gone a little softer on the box press because that the corners are not burning as well as the, hmm. the middle. So you get a couple of burn issues, but overall, very good draw, decent flavor. No, certainly not. Overpriced. Jonathan, could it be that the cigar you smoked yesterday is skewing everything to seem mild now? <laughs> we're not talking about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're not talking about some things we're not talking about, but uh, we'll get to that and more. Let's take a break when we come back. Grapefruit. What are Ed's <laughs> criteria to take on a new cigar or even consider it? We're going to get to that and uh, what kind of deal will it take for Ed to buy? going to learn that more. Manufacturers, I hope you're listening. We're live in the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to (laughs) the Cigar Authority. (laughs) Should have said grapefruit again. God bless you. On the United Podcast Network. Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. The Nicaraguan expression of America's beloved brand, Reserva Real. Reserva Real Nicaragua is a Nicaraguan puro, meticulously blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. The Reserva Real Nicaragua will take Romeo lovers and Romeo novices alike on a journey through premium Nicaraguan tobaccos. Reserva Real Nicaragua. It'll steal your heart again. Surgeon General warning, cigar smoking can cause lung cancer and heart disease. Cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton. Cut and light one now. Elberton cigars are handmade premium cigars from Nicaragua, created by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Expect a smooth, hearty smoke with a little spice and a great value. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, Elberton, Elberton. There's a cigar in the shop called Elberton, cut and light one now. In a world where the open road calls to the adventures. There is a cigar that pays tribute to a journey of resilience and determination. Introducing the Christoph Guardrail Cigar, a testament to the indomitable spirit of its founder, Glenn Case. The Guardrail's blend takes you on a captivating journey through the world's finest tobacco regions. Brazilian Maduro, Dominican Binder, and a unique touch of Zimbabwe. This medium to full-bodied cigar offers a variety of flavors that will delight your senses. With notes of caramel, the smoothness of French roast coffee, and the allure of dry cocoa, the God Rail's complexity is unmatched. Whether you're celebrating life's victories or savoring moments of camaraderie, the Christoph Guardrail Cigar brings people together with its unforgettable flavor and creamy finish. Take your taste buds on a ride they won't forget. 
Experience the Christoph Guardrail Cigar today. Christoph Cigars, take them for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. Hey, this is Bobcat Goldthwait, and I'm still alive, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority here on the Fabulous United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. West Tampa Cigars, it's passion with a purpose. Welcome back, everybody. Ed Santa Maria, the buyer for Two Guys Cigars, is here with us, and we're going through uh, lots of questions. If you uh, work at a cigar store, you want to be a cigar buyer is it a good position to be a buyer? Yeah, it has its pros and cons. Because you, you do, he, just, he is not just the buyer. Well, we're a small Some, family-owned company, yeah. so everybody wears multiple hats, yeah. and Ed wears the most hats. Yeah, and the buyer is... For some companies, just that's all they do. I have a big head, too, which is tough to find. <laughs> oh, it's a giant. Yeah. But you get a lot of samples. I do. You ever you know, notice it's always high tide every time you go to the beach? It's that. Mm, like the moon. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Funny. A very intellectual joke. That's there nice. we go. Premium Cigar Association trade show just days away. What are we leaving? Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday morning. Thursday. Um, we will see new lines of cigars from existing suppliers. We will see new suppliers that we don't even deal with at all. Um, what is your criteria for taking on a new brand, whether it be from an existing supplier or a new supplier we don't even deal with? You're taking a new brand on. We never saw this before. It's a different name. It's not an extension from it. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, how it smokes, Yeah. first of all. Um, how it looks, what the packaging is, um, the feel to the brand, uh, the price point, the, the feel to the brand, and the identity. What is the identity of that brand or that company? Um, In order for us to take that brand on, something has to go. There's only so much room. Correct. So Correct. We know he he go- complains about that all the time. Yes. <laughs> so we know going in, and we just had March Madness, which is beautiful. We, mm-hmm. we got rid of a bunch of stuff, but... This is 39 years. This is not like we have a lot of space. Well, and also, what do we do with, how do we do with similar brands? And at the end of the day, are they going to sell it? Are we going to be able to sell it online? Are they going to be able to sell it in the stores? Are they going to get behind it in the stores? What's our relationship with that company? You're not working the floor as as I'm not. I I just have to put the bullets in the chamber and hope that they aim and fire. Yeah. How much does the hype for a new brand play into a decision to buy? It depends upon the new brand and where the hype is. Where is the hype? Because the vocal percentage of the people on the internet that are out there and they're vocal isn't really what sells necessarily Those are singles in a broad buyers. range. Those are single buyers. Large. So, you know, we sell, most of what we sell is the mild, mild to medium, Connecticut shade wrapper, all the stuff that we've sold for years. You know, and it, the market's changing a little bit over the years, but really it's what do we feel like history has shown us in the market and not what is that vocal group standing up saying yes yeah, it's a combination put, of both you've got to push that aside and, and, right. and show up and this a lot of people are talking about is you walk up you try it and you say eh it's all right twenty dollars it's too much right you know I, what i hear out of you is smoking a cigar and say it's about five dollars too much you know listen do we want to sell more expensive cigars of course we do but but you have to be able to back that sale up yes you have to be confident that that product is worth what it's worth and when I, when I smoke this sorry to interrupt yeah when I smoke this it reminded me of Matosa Maduro a little bit 
And to me, I thought, you know, we do really well with that. I think we could do really well with this. And that was what kind of pushed that decision. So it's, it's weighing, you know, history. Now, with the... Yeah, here's a box press Montosa Maduro. Right, basically. right. With the McAuliffe Black doing as well as it is, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but it seems like one of the best cigars of the year as far as the, the sales in the first quarter. I heard, yeah, somebody said that. I heard that. It's, it was the cigar of the year somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but is, the, is that on your radar to find the next gem of a low-priced, full-bodied cigar? Do you all, think one always. will exist? And it's not necessarily to find the best low-priced quality cigar. It's to find the next big thing. You know, two years ago, it was um, West Tampa, yes. which has been a huge brand for us. Before that, a few years ago, it was Aladino. Last year, it was... I talk with my hands. I'm Italian. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Last year was, um, you know, McAuliffe Black. It was a huge hit for us. You know, it, it's... And, and that's an interesting story. I'm very tight with those guys. Hi, Dan and Amanda, if you're watching. But they're an interesting brand because talking about brand identity and brand integrity, they're very wide right now. They have a lot of different brands and a lot, you know, it's not necessarily defined, but they're doing their best to define it as we move, you know, forward. And uh, it made that an easy decision because this is the direction that they're going in and they're also going to launch the Blue, which is coming out at this year's trade show, which I expect to be huge as well. It's in a great price point. It's a great cigar. Yeah. Yeah. You've smoked it? Where, where's my sample? <laughs> uh, I think it's on next week's show, isn't it? It's somewhere in the... In oh, the, it's in the care pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in right. the care pack. As long as I don't get, get skipped over. Listen, I, this happens to me. You, you, yeah. People wouldn't believe it that uh, Ed's smoking a cigar before I get it, but it, but it is true. And sometimes I, I let him know, hey, I'm really interested in such and such. <laughs> Look out for that. And said, well, I already had it and it was good or it's already ordered or yeah, we're going to relook at this or whatever. And then sometimes I show up at the warehouse and you have some cigars for me. And sometimes I, I got a couple cigars for you this week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes, and I don't think you like it, that a manufacturer comes right to me. Mm. I'll get a, a message from them and say, are you, you going to be around on Friday? I'm going to stop by. Sure, okay. And I come and then I let you know after. And you go, really? Yeah. Of, and like he's cheating it. They're, they're, uh, what, <laughs> what is it, going over your head maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm... I understand the, the idea behind it, but you've been great over the years at, you know, passing it back to me and yeah. saying, this is your decision. Yeah, I yeah. want you to smoke it. I want you to figure out, you know, if this is something that fits for us. And you've and, given me that freedom. And you hear this, we both get one at the trade show of that the other person says, no way. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess I can say no way to something, uh, but I try not to. But I get to have one that it doesn't matter what Ed says. I'm going to do this. And you and wasted it on candles. I wasted it on candles. It's such a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they were, they were the weirdest candles in the world, and I hope they're at the show this year and say, I, what the hell happened? Me too. But it was the weirdest thing because you weren't against it. No, I thought it was awesome. Yeah. They all smelled like candy. How can I say no to yeah, that? Yeah, it was really good. But Okay, so um, we go up to a, a brand. You say... Listen, I'm tasting it. I really like it. Uh, I think the price is good. Everything's good. They got eight sizes. You're not buying eight sizes. No. So how do you determine? We never carried it before. How do you determine the sizes? How many sizes to do? Do you, do you buy one? Do you buy eight? Do you buy what? Again, it's the numbers and the history. And it doesn't benefit them or us if we bring in one size of one thing and we bury it in the case. Yeah, and say, wait. okay, we're going to see what happens. It needs a, it needs a footprint. Yeah. It needs something that's, that's visually pleasing that people can come in and see and be interested in. So at least three to four sizes. Yeah. Five is kind of pushing it. But yeah. at least three to four sizes. And what sells? Toros, Robustos. If they have a Churchill in the line, maybe the Churchill. If they have a Gordo in the line, maybe the Gordo. Yeah. But the Gordo is a value proposition. So once you get into the higher end stuff, yeah. you really have to look at the other sizes because maybe it's not the Gordo, maybe it's the Corona at that point. Right, right. Um, not the Lancero. I know how you feel about those. <laughs> and then how that's called wide. How wide do you make the footprint? Then it's how deep do you go? You never carried it before. How many boxes do we need? And the old adage when you got in the business early on with us might have been one to show, one to go, which means one to open up and let people buy singles. But having a box in the back in case the guy smoked the single and said, wow, this is really good. Give me a box of those. And then you sell them the box immediately place an order for two more boxes and move on from there. But three stores online, it's got to be 
deeper than that. Well, we have to have one to show, one to go at least. Sometimes one to show, two to go. But that's across the board at each store. Yeah. And online is different. It's a different animal. Yeah. So I may buy you know, 20 or something with the intent of sending three to the stores and having 11 at the warehouse yeah, yeah. because I know that I'm either going to need to backfill after that point or to have them online because there is a buzz online for this brand. Sure. And I'm going to need to keep up with that. Right. Okay. Um, and there's some stuff that you buy and you just have it just online. Just online. Because I know it's not going to sell well for us at the stores. But maybe you get a little pop early on in, in case the brand ends up doing it. And it's happened that all of a sudden something gets popular. I didn't think was go, okay, let's try it at the stores now. Okay, and it ended up going to the And the opposite. Uh, we right. go from the stores back to just online. Well, there was the story of the, that little Migdalia SE. Yes, which and sells here. I never, ever ask a rep for a second cigar. And the rep had come in, gave me the first cigar, went upstairs to chat with Dave, came down and I said, man, that was really good. Mm -hmm. I, I never do this, but I really want to smoke that one more time. And he handed both Trevor and I, there were maybe six cigars left in that box, handed it to us and we start smoking them. And I called you and I said, Trevor and I want to buy boxes of these. They're really good. And you were very good. You backed us up with 12 and they all, they all go. But like I said earlier, I know you're going to be behind it. Right. <laughs> so I can go in knowing that. That's a guaranteed that, sale. Right, you're, going to, you're going to sell that. You always have Valadino Corojo Robustos. Right. Right? Because you're behind it. So the stuff that I know that you guys are behind, and there are differences in the stores. Seabrook sells more of this. Yes. And, and Salem sells more of this. And Nashua sells more of that. And online sells more of that. So, it, you know, it's balancing those things. Very complicated. Mm -hmm. It sounds complicated because it is. It does, but uh -huh. there's an art to it. It's easy to end up saying it. But we have 1,100 different cigar skews let alone accessories, which becomes another problem in itself, and colors of those accessories. And Do you know how many SKUs there are? About 4,800 active SKUs right now. 4,800. Mm. That's active. box in, single, that's accessories, that's everything. 4,800 different things. Oh, boy. Uh, chat room wants to know what Ed likes to smoke. What do I like to a smoke? A better question is, what does he not like to smoke? What do I not <laughs> like to smoke? No, and, because and he, he buys smokes, those too. He, he buys smokes, those too. He smokes everything. Yeah, it's not. A, again, it's not about me. It's what's going to sell. Yeah, and, but and, uh, if it's just you and you want something to enjoy, what do you enjoy? So I've got time to turn off turn off my phone and sit yeah, on my you're not at work. And nobody's and, bothering yeah. me. Um, it's probably an Alfonso or an Atabay Brujo. It's probably one of those two things. And here's the problem. Since November of last year, you went to the warehouse. We finally got a warehouse after all this time. <laughs> and you have a no-smoking warehouse. It's a struggle. Which becomes a struggle. You can't get it done after hours. All, you know, work all day and then do it. And I, had a, it I had a tough winter. And I finally said it to, to the people there and to my wife. I said, it's because I can't smoke during the day. It's killing me. Yeah. You know, I'm like, why is this, this winter killing me? It hasn't been a bad winter. It hasn't been snowy, but it, that's the reason. We got to figure something out there, some sort of um, hut or something that whatever, but we're, like a we're, cone we're, of silence. We're thing in an industrial warehouse <laughs> park yeah. that doesn't allow it. So that becomes the problem. Uh, okay. Opening deal at the PCA. Does that play a role in your purchase if, if they're having a deal to it that will push you over the edge? Yes and no. Because sometimes if the deal's too good, the deal's too good. If part of the deal is a size that I know isn't going to sell, I don't necessarily want to yeah, it doesn't mean anything. jump in on that deal. And that goes for other deals, too. Like if, if, you're a, if I know that we have this existing brand and we're going to sell X of, of this size and X of this size, but we're only going to sell you know, one-third X of that at this other size, I'm not going to go for that across-the-board deal because... That's going to take up space. Yeah. That's going to take up money. That's how I was, too, back when I was doing it myself, that the deal just didn't make sense. And I go, no, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's really good, but it doesn't work. Leave. And then I get a message while I'm at the show and say, come back. We have a, a we're, we're made fortunate. It deal. We're fortunate. Sometimes we can make our own deals. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, what constitutes a no? Okay, I'm, I'm not doing it. It's just not going to work. Whether it be any of the criteria that I mentioned earlier, you know, the cigar is not great. Yeah. The packaging is not great. The the look of it, the feel of it, the identity of the brand, the pricing of it. Yeah. Is, is it, it is it no it, for now or is it no? There have been some brands that have been no for now. Yeah. And other brands that are just no. And you know, without getting too deep into it, too, it's it's what is that brand like? Elsewhere, is the price protected? Is it something that we can get behind, or is it something that we're going to have to? Our model, which we care about the brick and mortar store. I period. don't want to race to the bottom. Yeah, 
Yeah. I want to race to the bottom. So, yeah. um, you know, those are all really keys in, in all of it, whether it be a new brand or an old brand. Absolutely. Right now it's time for the confessional, and that's brought to you by All Saints Cigars. It's time for the confessional. Brought to you by All Saints Cigars, featuring the All Saints St. Francis. Voted the 2021 Cigar of the Year. All Saints Cigars. In the name of the Churchill, Toro, and Robusto. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been, my son, since your last St. Francis uh, uh, <clears throat> confession? It's been one week since my last confession. And what is it that you have to confess today, my son? And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And two things about this particular confession caught my eye right out of the gate. The email address is anonymous at lanceroHate.com. <laughs> so, I mean, at that point. Uh, but also... Uh, how do you change your email address? You've got to show me how to do that. It, it asks you to input it, so you just you input just whatever you want. type in whatever the hell you want. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, and then the subject line is Mr. Jonathan's shiny forehead. Uh, <laughs> forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Wow. Recently, a good friend of mine made a joke about smoking cigars in the back of a nice restaurant. For context, he's never smoked a cigar in his life. Little did he know about my obsession with cigars. And this show, I, and this show, I pulled my travel humidor out of my bag and offered him a Calif A. As he is an independent person, he refused my offer to borrow my cutter, and I watched in horror ah, as he is. sawed the end of his cigar with a dull box cutter. Since I then gave him shit about this every time I see him, I even gifted him a cutter for his birthday so he would never commit a sin of this kind ever again. Not too sure if I deserve no penance due to his actions or the maximum because I allowed him to do it. Yeah, you sit there and watch it happen. Mm. It's cringeworthy. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Try to overpower the guy with the box I mean, cutter? Hit, you Hit him yeah. right in the jaw. And yeah, knock him let, unconscious. Me, let me stop you right there. Hold mm. on. You're about to destroy something. I don't know. There's a little... You've got to help a friend out. I mean, listen, he's got some culpability, but he didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. I, he did a nice thing. He gave somebody a cigar. All so right. we'll give him this one. Oh, jeez. You're an animal. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> now he's got to smoke he a lot. He smoke one full box of all saint cigars this week. That's it. Once he's you, an once animal. Once you've done it, the, the, the priest can't go back on no. his, what he said, right? It would be wrong. Okay, uh, next week on the show, uh, Ed and I will not be here. Ed Santa Maria and I will not be here. We're going to the show and buy a whole bunch of cigars. But um, Ed Sullivan and... Jonathan will be here, but they're bringing in two pinch hitters. Uh, one is Eric Wentworth, who sat next to you for years, yeah. for years. Um, so he knows what he's doing, too. Yes. Um, he later became a president of a cigar company and everything, and now he has a new company. Be interesting. Um, Eric Wentworth with a new cigar company, and Dan Davison, who worked lots in the industry, all kinds yep. of different stuff, too. So you got to... Everything from management all the way to buying, all the way to representing a brand. Yeah, he's, he knows yeah. his shit. So these guys know their stuff. They'll be on the show, so uh, I don't think it'll be a train wreck. I think you guys got... No, you, it, w it will be. It's going to be... It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a train wreck. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I kind of don't want to overturn the uh, hockey card here. I, I want to keep the streak going with train wreck shows. <laughs> well, just Teach you not just, to leave. What just is end a, at 10, 15 minutes early like you usually do. <laughs> what is a hockey card? Is I don't know. I couldn't card? remember the apple card. I couldn't remember the, the expression. Hockey card? Hockey card? Uh, huh. I, was, I guess it's my fault, though. I gave Eric his start in the industry. I hired him. Yeah. So Why you didn't you hire me. him of all people? We came uh, in with a really hot wife Freddy, is what I heard. Yeah, Freddie said I should interview him because his wife was really hot. That's it. That's it. So I did. I remember. That's old thing. fart Freddie for you yep. people who've been listening for a while. There uh, we go. Dave, just had a birthday. Chat room's got show ideas this week. Good. Let's see if you what you think about them. How about uh, great cigars with terrible packaging? It's, it's uh, interesting. We, if we can or, come up with or a ter lot. terrible cigars with great packaging. There's a good trade <laughs> show story about that. Yeah. Um, um, You're not going to say the brand name. Though. I'm not going to say the brand name, but they <laughs> handed us both a cigar, right? So Dave lights his Today. up. Today? No, no. This was oh. years ago. We're at the trade show. 
we're talking to this guy, and he says, here, you got to try this, gives us the cigars, and we light them, mm -hmm. and we walk down the aisle five minutes later. Oh, wow. Unbeknown, unbeknownst to me, I go right to put it in an ashtray. Mm. He goes left to put it in an ashtray. <laughs> we both turn around at the same time and start dying laughing, because it was terrible. <laughs> it was horrible, and they sold the company for a lot of money. It huh? was not good. Oh, boy. And the packaging was... Unbelievable. Yeah. What is, a, what is the... It went, went by... What, one more idea. Does rebranding work for a show? Go through and find some rebranded cigars? Yeah. And There's some successes and some failures. Yeah. yeah, that's good. All right. What is the conversation like when you get a different cigar than the one you smoked and placed the order? Because I know I, I've watched you do it. The, the cigars come in. You immediately you go to the Toro or the Robusto, yep. and you smoke it to make sure that it's the right cigar. What is the conversation like when it's wrong? It's expected that it's going to be different because a lot of the samples, they're just kind of rolling together and getting out there on the street so that they can get the sales at the show. They want to hand it out and get the feedback and, and get the numbers on the books. So by the time they age it for longer, because you're talking another six months before it actually ships, the cigar is going to change. It's going to have subtle changes to it in most cases. Never have I had anything, you can speak to this too, that's been dr dramatically different than it used to be. We try to deal with safe companies. You know, are we going to pick up some little companies or somebody new and try to find the next diamond in the rough out there or something? Yes, but I would say most of the brands we're going to buy are going to be tried and true partners with us, right? That, it's a relationship we're yeah. starting. Yeah. Um, so uh, I got some rapid fire questions to go well, through with you. Dave, they want to see Ed on again for an update after the trade show. So maybe we can do an after show during the week sometimes. So. If I say yes, will he wait eight months to work me back into the schedule? Or um, should I? Say if you if you say yes to a, a weekday show, I think he'll he'll be all right with that. A weekday show? Well, yeah, yeah we just, just so you don't throw have him to, on an on, on, on an after, after show. The assholes. We could do that, or or, the or an after show. Either way. Hey, I'm willing to step out. He, I, I gave him the reins of buyer many, many years ago. Right. He can be the cigar authority, too. <laughs> he can be the whole thing. <laughs> wow, he looks sold. Yeah, I don't know about that. There we go. <laughs> All right, rapid, this was fun, but I don't know about that. Rapid fire questions. Uh, easiest company to buy from? That is a great question that I'm not going to answer. Ooh. Come on. Um, because yeah. most are happy to take our money. Most are happy to have the relationship with us. Most are happy to be in the store. It's not, um, you know, easiest company to buy from is, I think you're going to ask about portal buying. Yes. Those are some of the easiest companies to buy from. But I'm, we're self-sufficient. You know, I'm, I'm monitoring yes. inventory. So I'm not waiting for you the know, rep to come in and if, say, hey, do you need this? If you asked all the manufacturers out there who is the easiest person that, buy, that you sell to, it's two guys, Smoke Shop. We are the easiest. <laughs> At the trade show... Because yeah. every single person, Ed comes with a stack of papers. The orders are already made completely. Everything is completely done based on any information that he has. He has to tweak it if they end up changing things up or if there's something new that he doesn't even know about. But boom, we're all set. How are you? Here's your, here's your order. It's complete. Somebody's <laughs> looking at it, shaking hands, saying, how's everything going and stuff. He goes, well, that was the easiest one. It's the easiest and it's the biggest order you're going to get all day. And it's the easiest one. And by the way, you're going to get paid early as soon as uh, it arrives to us. The secret is preparation. Yeah. Just being ready for it. With anything, the secret is preparation. So we go, we're ready to go, and we exchange pleasantries, and we're done. We can be done with this trade show in two days. And being on the other end, and I have been on the other end, on the receiving end at a trade show, and people come in and say, well, what do you think? Should we get a Robusto? I don't know. What do you think? And this <laughs> thing is going on for the longest time, and they say, well, we, we can hardly get through the trade show. You are so not prepared to come to a and buying not, trade show. I'm not guessing. It's preparation. I know yes. what sell. Like We know Toros yeah. and Robustos, and the other size is yes, depending on what they have. We know these, these pieces of information. All right. So the easiest you're not going to say, who is the hardest person to... <laughs> that is also a great question, <laughs> um, which I am also not going to answer um, really straightforward. But you're we, getting pegged we, right now, Dave. Yeah. We kind of alluded to it. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I feel Mickey like, Peck, Mickey Peck, Peck very uncomfortable. Answer. Well, I'm going to answer it without answering it because we kind of talked about it earlier. Who are the most difficult companies to deal with? It's those that 
have their own vision of what how we should do business. Yeah. Right. So it's figuring out those relationships, and that's that's everything. That's at home with my relationships at yeah. home with with all the employees we have. Yeah. People learn differently. People behave differently. Sure. People mm-hmm. react to things differently. So how do we have these companies that want to do business with us and figure out how we can facilitate that in a way that works for us and for them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the portal thing, you like it? I love it. All mm. right. I love it. That's interesting because that, that takes the rep out of the picture. I never like to end up doing mm. that. Understand that when Mr. Rep, <clears throat> you're out there and the company is going to a portal, we don't need you anymore mm-hmm. if that's the case. I guess you can bring a cigar in and do pleasant well, that is, you, with you, us. And that's what happens. Yeah, you do need, you need a representative of the company coming in and sampling the staff and getting them well, educated. Well, the problem with, with Ed is he's in a place that he can't even smoke the cigar with the guy. He's not it the It makes staff. the meeting so quick. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It makes the meeting so quick. But he is correct. They should still go to the stores. Yes. Because sure. that's who's selling the cigar. I know. I'm buying it, but I'm not selling mm. it through. Right, right. Okay, easiest company to deal with at the trade show with your deal? Do you, do you like complicated deals? Do you like easier deals? Do you, you know what it is in advance, so does it matter? No. doesn't matter how complicated it is. No, but give me is. an easy deal. Don't complicate things. <laughs> We're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Let's just make, a, make an easy deal. You know, for manufacturers out there listening, make the deal easy. Don't make it you have to buy this to do this to do that in different criteria and different level. It's just confusing and it, it's just quarterly. Mm. Quarterly, it has to be this of so many faces. Yeah, and then, just make it easy for yeah. everybody. Some of these things are like insane that... I mean, it's it's multiple pages, and and they've done um, Zoom calls with both of us and stuff. And you got this ad because I I'm completely <laughs> gone 15 minutes into this call. What do I what do I have to do? And I'll get three percent at the end of the year if this do is, this and uh, add this and have this and but not these facings, but you not those. Yeah, these ones don't count towards the overall number, but they do count towards the whatever. What? Yeah, I break out the abacus and the slide rule, yeah. and we figure it out. <laughs> that Correct. is the toughest. Bring out the charts. Um, anything interest you in a new company to do business with of, well, I guess you answered it with a buzz that's out there, social media buzz or something and you're, you're looking into this or do you look into that much at all? I do. Yeah. I do. So I know about them, but they don't know much about me particularly, yes. but us in some cases, even us as a whole, yeah. um, some of the newer companies aren't familiar with, with how two guys does business. Um, but I don't want to say too much because we haven't built that relationship yet. Yeah. And I'm still the, I'm still the cheerleader that yeah, yeah. wants to get invited to the prom. So I'm waiting. You know, we're going to see what happens at the show, see what kind of um, deal there's going to be. What's the cigar like? Uh, do they want to work with us? Um, because, it's, again, it's relationships. Yeah, yeah. And we have a way that it's going to work for us really good, and we don't keep it a secret. We say to them, if we do this and you do that, then we do this and you do that. And, and we lay that out too. Yeah. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Here it is. This, 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 these steps. If you take these steps, we'll take these steps and everybody will benefit. Without saying the name of the brand, is there any brand last year that there it was at the show, you said no, and then you're going back to look at it again because now you're interested? Maybe. Yeah. I want to know, we're at the early part of 2024, is there one sample that you smoked that is absolutely a standout. I haven't had much new yet that I know is going to show up at the show. I mean, we already we're in for McAuliffe Blue. I smoked that last week. It was phenomenal. Okay. Um, but we're already in for that. And some of this other stuff too that we had talked we're gonna, about. Yeah, we're going yeah, we'll to get to that. But, one more question. Uh, who is the biggest piece of shit in the cigar industry? <laughs> oh, I was hoping you, you were going to ask say that me. question. You can't say me. Um, well, let's, I, let's pause and let's go to break and you give us oh. that answer when, you get, uh, when we get back from break. Uh, I have uh, new cigars coming out of PCA and uh, we're going to actually smoke one of them when we get back. Uh, Ed hasn't even tried it yet. It's right over here. Uh, will he buy it? Does he have an option? Those questions and more <laughs> and new stuff coming out. We're live at the Toscano Soundstage and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. 
Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, my friend, the time is now. For just $29.99, you get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke those cigars along with you during the show. Is that really a benefit? I think it is. We will judge the construction, flavor, strength, and review the cigars, and you'll see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for just $29.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on the CigarAuthority.com and sign up now. That's the Cigar Authority Care Package. Agent Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning, tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease even in non-smokers. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast or better yet passionado cigar journal covers cigars in the u.s and around the world and is printed right here in the usa you owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine cigar journal available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website cigarjournal.com that's cigar journal Com. Hi, this is Rocky Patel, and believe it or not, I am 62 years old. Well, to celebrate my 60th birthday, we wanted to come up with something really, really special. I went and looked at some of our oldest tobaccos that we'd grown in our farms from 2014 in Esteli, Nicaragua, and we found bales of fillers. 7th and 8th priming Lijero, just wonderful, rich, rich tobaccos, a dark, oily San Andreas wrapper, a great binder from Mexico, and then fillers from Jalapa and Esteli. This cigar is called the Rocky Patel 60th, looks like a dark chocolate, and tastes like a dark chocolate. It's got layers and layers of coffee, espresso, lingering spice, Uh, It is rich and decadent. You're going to try one and you're going to fall in love. This cigar got the number two cigar of the year in Cigar Aficionado. Rightly so. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. And I promise you this cigar is going to deliver everything you enjoy in a fine cigar. Some say cigars are all the same. It's just not true. It's you I have to blame. Well, I don't know, because what I know, there is a cigar called Aladino. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. They say authentic, so we're not confused, while the others say it's a word that's just abused. I guess that's so. They can't compete. At least I'm sure Aladino can't be beat. Corojo. Aladino Corojo. Aladino Corojo. 
Aladino Cigars. Use authentic Corojo tobacco for JRE Tobacco. This is the greatest commercial you ever heard. Yeah. Hey, this is Bobcat Goldthwait. Go f*** yourself. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Uh, man of a uh, few words, Bobcat. Uh, we're back. Powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Company featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. West Tampa Cigars, passion with a purpose. You remember Bobcat? You remember who he was? Yeah, 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 yeah. And who, that was who, nice. who, to, who he was. I guess who he is. <laughs> he still is. He still is. Yeah. I used to watch a lot of stand-up. Oh, back yeah? In, yeah, back in the 90s. Light, lightning sets on fire in the, uh, I think it was uh, Tonight Show or yeah. something, and crazy stuff. Can we talk anyway. about how that was the worst beep ever? <laughs> <laughs> By design. <laughs> All right, we got a new cigar to uh, light up, and uh, tell us about this, Jonathan. Well, Dave, today's second cigar is the La Giana 30th Anniversary. It is manufactured in Honduras by an undisclosed manufacturer for United Cigars. The size is 6x54. It is wrapped in both Ecuadorian Connecticut and Mexican San Andreas. The binder is a Honduran Habano Criollo, and it is filled with Honduran, Dominican Republic, and tobaccos from the USA. A single cigar will set you back $12.00. While a box of 20 is $199.99, dropping the single price down to $10.20 on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. Is this for sale? Not yet. No, you can't buy it. How do you get that information? <laughs> it's not available on twoguyscigars.com. It will be eventually. eventually. It will be eventually, and I think the box price is a little lower than it will be online, but that's... a Story for another time. Yeah. Uh, so all your information is wrong. But anyway, it's La Giana 30th <laughs> anniversary. Um, this was uh, October 4th is the real anniversary. But uh, I made this cigar. This is the second cigar I ever came out with, 1994, 30 mm. years ago. We never stopped making it. It's been ongoing. Uh, you know, listen, we just saw Perdomo 30th. It was a big deal for Perdomo. La Giana 30th. You're going to see La Flor Dominicana 30th. Yep. 1994. A lot of shit happened in 1994. How many of those things are still around? Not many. Right. Not many. And La Giana still is. Um, you're saying $12 in the cigar. Uh, this cigar looks like a $20 cigar. All to day. Me. Ed, is it true you tried to veto this cigar? No, <laughs> I wouldn't say that in public, Ed. But um, listen, they're asking. Yeah, no, I uh, I liked the cigar. The cigar itself smoked really, really well. I did smoke it before. He said oh, I did? haven't smoked it yet, but okay. I smoked it. I can't. I can't lie about that. Uh, I have smoked it, and the cigar was great. So it changed my mind on that. Because cigar was great. Are you again? But because of Baba Pole, you right. think it's gimmicky yeah, like yeah. I am. Yeah, I can't. I can't help but be, be that way. But the idea of this is. La Giana Maduro is an outstanding cigar. Never mind that I ma- they made the cigar, but the idea of it is the Maduro sweetness comes out because it's not all that of a strong cigar. Take the Avo Maduro. happens to be the same people that make that, too. They did a great job with that also. Can't say that out loud, either. <laughs> but I didn't say who makes this. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say it. Uh, all right. Okay. They, they make that cigar also. Okay. And... Here's, this is what I wanted. I wanted Maduro to taste like it's supposed to taste instead of being a strong cigar. It's outstanding. And here is both of them actually together. And the cigar is super dense. Like when we do cigar journal tastings and they want to know uh, how it's yeah, filled, it is. it is super dense. There are no soft spots. Yeah. It's very Beautiful. firm. Listen, I said it's important. Uh, we, we have to do this right. It's a one-time thing. They did us right. Uh, they always do. Uh, fantastic cigars. And the, the band is beautiful. The packaging is beautiful. Yeah. And the, you'd look at this like if, if you went into a trade show and there it's going to be, you'd look at it and say, wow, and $12. It's underpriced. La Giana is underpriced, and it always mm-hmm. was. That yeah. was the idea of it also. Look, look at it brick and mortar stores. This is what we need, this type of cigar. Give us something outstanding for, for a price so that the guy doesn't go online and buy cheaper st- Name brand cheaper stuff from somebody else. I think, I think 12 is the sweet spot on yeah, this. For there sure. we go. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually Just lowered them. Up. 
Perdomo Cigars, oh, I did, I did they it. stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Will you talk over the advertisers? So. Huh. Who? Sorry, Nick. Who even are you? <laughs> That's all you do. Sorry, no, Nick. No, I don't. I talk them. I talk the ad. And then you talk over the ad. You talk over every single one of my bits. Every single huh. one of your bits. I can't make it. I'm still sorry, Nick. They I can can't make as it through the, like the apologize. asylum. I'm going to start the asylum <laughs> and you're going to be like, them. oh, I know who that is. They do this all the time and I just sit back and watch. <laughs> don't. Now, don't you two see that you're in love with each other? <laughs> I got a good drop. Mm, delicious. Mm. Little vanilla. Little golden cake. Vanilla custard. Golden. Golden cake. No one even waits for you to light the cigar 30th. anymore. We're going to light our cigar today with the Blizzard by Vertigo, which features single action and three jets fueled by the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. You get easy adjustment at the bottom, all for the low price of nine ninety nine. Get them while they're just nine ninety nine, because that price is going to go up. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, they're going up. I miss the subtle cues about waiting to cut and light. Mm. Uh, right. You're new, I'm new here. I'm new Dave's with this. on the show, and he starts lighting before I've pitched the lighter. Because you pause when you're supposed to talk, we'll and then out. you talk when you're supposed to pause. But that's it's, it's my part fault. Of your charm. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interested cigars at PCA. Three leaf. They're not going to be a PCA. You skipped over the question that you asked me. Oh, oh that's an important that? one. Who's the biggest piece of shit in the cigar Here industry? Here we go. I decided that since I can't narrow it down to one, ah. I'm not going to answer it because I don't want to piss anybody off. I'm going to see them all next week. I'm going to yeah. have somebody come up hot. Maybe next time you come in, we have a top ten. Ooh. <laughs> top and we seven. lead all the way up to the <laughs> biggest piece of shit. Ooh. I like maybe a top five or three. Ten's a stretch. Really? You'd yeah. have a hard time to get to 10? Yeah. I'll help you. I can get to 10. I can get to 10. I'd be adding people just to add people, I think, at that point. I, I'd probably end up having a, like a five-way tie for 10th. Yeah, you'd have like a top 25. <laughs> no need to be angry with us. We're going and spending money and buying and whatever, and it's a yes or no. It's business. Yeah. Bus it's Completely business. Completely business. There's not, no personal thing into it. So you don't have to bring family members into this and talk the way you talk. <laughs> um, three Leaf Cigars. Yes. They're not going to be at the show because they couldn't, because they didn't know if they were going to have the cigars in time and all this stuff. But Eric Wentworth, he sat next to you all this time. Do you just give him a pass and you buy the cigar? In this case, yes. And again, it's because of history. Yeah. Where he came from. He came from Hammer and Sickle. We had a great relationship with Hammer and Sickle. We killed it with Hammer yeah. and Sickle. So, of course, we'll take a chance on, on Three Leaf. Yeah. We didn't even have to have a sample. It turns out to be a good cigar, but it didn't matter. We were going to give it a yeah, shot. Yeah, and I, I'm close with him. He's been sharing the information with me for months. Okay. Adventura, those are the folks at the factory burned down. Hmm. Oh, my God. And they were the up and coming is like it was unbelievable where they were going. Do you just give them a pass, or do we try their cigar? And they we've, we've done really well with their limited short-run stuff yeah. over the last couple of years. Um, the, when they had the, the fire and they, they had issues with production, things kind of slowed down a little bit for us, but we're still carrying all the lines and doing well with all the lines. Yeah. So, I mean, the Chancellor is a, is a no-brainer. I'd like to try the, the box press Queen's Pearl. Yeah. Um, but the Chancellor is something that I think we, we should get behind. And... What a nice thing they did. The Chancellor is a rep. They had a contest for the, the best rep that they end up having, and then that would be designing and coming up with the brand. It's with them. The rep is Adrian Acosta, a uh, good man. Uh, Adrian has come up and seen the Cigar Authority many years ago when he worked for Nat Sherman. He jumped in a car to come down. He's a good, good guy. So there's another relationship of somebody I care about. I care about the company, and I care about the guy that works at the company, too. So... Assuming it's not a piece of shit, which I assume it's not going to be, uh, I think we're in. And again, like Three Leaf, this is a company that wants to work with us and wants to grow, yeah. and, and that's really the key. Yeah. Partnership. And that's what it takes. It takes two, right? Yep. Uh, Aganosa Leaf. The Asinio is coming back. Yes. Uh, and this is not Asinio Hall. This is Asinio <laughs> Ramos from, uh, that used woo, to be their woo, blender. Woo, woo, woo. And... Um, I, re I remember when that first came in. It was uh, I'm sorry. It has to be a deeper woo. Yeah. That was, a, that was too woo, woo, woo. high pitched of a woo. It was a, a lady woo. woo, 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 woo yeah, woo, yeah, that's woo. better. That's better. Mm. Um, 
Remember that was a five dollar cigar mm-hmm. back in the day, box of ten for five dollars. It's not five dollars. No, anymore. I know, but I'm looking forward to giving it a try. It's like fourteen to sixteen, mm. and they have the return of a ten by one hundred. We bought it last time. We killed it. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the one that had the torpedo at the end, right? It so was could... mind numbing how quickly they sold. It wow. was insane. And I thought we went pretty heavy too. Yeah, and they did too. Do you right. think? That you go a little easier on the second time because the people that wanted to get it got it? Or do you go for your balls and say, okay, well, it happened last time? I would say, normally I would say yes. I would say yes. We'll take it easy this time. But I can tell you that I sent some out to the stores, and every time I brought some back, they went out immediately. They weren't in inventory for more than, but, literally, more than an hour. And don't over-order those or we'll end up smoking them on the we show. We were always yeah, doing so none left. Yeah, we ran out. We couldn't smoke them We on had it set to do on the show, and we, we couldn't do it because we ran out. With t- we were all so happy. We don't want to smoke this again. I, I smoked drunk. it. You did. It was awesome. Wow. Because they only have their tobacco. Would you smoke it again, though? Is that one of those things that if you If it was can, on the show, of course. You can shame I'm yourself probably, into yeah, it once. I'm probably not going to light again. it up in the store, but... Um, other than the fact that after three and a half hours of smoking it, it really kind of stopped the flavor changes at that point. Mm. But it was annoyingly delicious. But did you take the full 10 inches? Everybody <laughs> wants to know. Aladino smoked it for three and a half hours. That's Aladino <laughs> Candela Toro. Now, that would be a no for me. This tells you that he is the buyer because you bought it. Bought it. We have it the, already. The Lanceros, you buy them. In small amounts. Yeah. Because, again, it's something that may not sell in the stores, but it will sell yeah. online. Aladino special cigar. I don't know what I can say and what you I can't. You can't say anything. You have to stop right there. All right. <laughs> All right. Stop right. We smoked it. Yes. It was great. Great. Yeah. But that's as far as I would go. All right. So that, that's uh, going to be a story. We're going to hold off for one more week. Although I, I believe they did mention it on Cigar Pulpit. While mentioning you as well. Oh, did they mention it? I didn't think it was out there yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it was in conjunction with Dave being the biggest piece of shit in the cigar industry. (laughs) (laughs) It's not true at all. For opening his mouth when he shouldn't have. Okay. uh, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. He was on the show a couple weeks ago. Last week? Last week. Last week. Last week. Uh, Stillwell Star Aromatic Number 2, which was the holiday edition now, becoming a regular edition called Aromatic Number 2. That was a winner. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> oh, a little pause there. Yes. Again, not, not huge in, in the stores, but okay. online it did, it did well. All right. Umbagog, bronze back. We do well with Umbagog across the board. We'll so, take a look at that. It, it was good. And this one is a 10-count box of Lancero collection, which all 10 cigars in there are all different Lanceros, which makes this impossible to really sell. He already told me we need to buy it and buy heavy. He said that last week. He's like, really? we need to get all in on this Lancero craze. Yeah. I'm really, I changed my mind. Not true No, at you all. didn't say that? No. <laughs> Not true at all. That was the other no. day. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Listen, he's really that was probably setting Steve. himself up for this should be total failure. If somebody's going to do it, Steve Sock is going to make it work. But it should be absolute failure. Because... Nobody buys boxes of Lanceros, and the only thing to do is to buy the whole box because they're all 10. We open it up, and somebody says, I want to get the Candela. They take it. Now that's gone. Hmm. And somebody comes in, oh, I wanted to try the Candela. Well, I can't try the Candela. There was only one of them. Oh, I wanted to try the Sweet Tip one or whatever. All these different ones that are in there. The Lanceros that we do well with, air quotes, is singles. It's not boxes. Right. There's no box. There's only one of each single in the box. Mm -hmm. This is an impossible thing. And he's smart enough. He's not even making them until he gets the order. But he mm. already said he got like a thousand boxes, thousands of boxes ordered, which is another thing. Okay, you already have thousands of boxes ordered. Then forget it. I know one guy I can sell one to. But is the, does the limited nature of it feed into that? Will they want to buy the box because they can only get it in the it's box? It's not too limited time? if he's going to do thousands of them. True. Thousands. Hmm. We're going to have to talk on this one. Oh, yeah. This is, a, this is one... I have a feeling neither one of you is using they? your mulligan on this. I'm one. not. No, I'm not using my freebie on this one. Yeah. How much are they? We don't even know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that yet. Yeah. So if the box was ten dollars cigars and a box that's of ten is a hundred dollars, okay. But that's you, not going to happen. Be lucky Actually, I, I asked him. I don't know if this is public knowledge yet, but I asked him. It's probably going to be around fifteen bucks a stick. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry if I wasn't supposed to say that out loud, Steve. All right. Um, HVC, uh, hotcakes fresh out of the oven, broadleaf. Big. Big. Limited release. Only so many. We're going to do, can we say it? Yeah. You we're can, we're going to tease it a little bit. Well, go ahead, say the whole thing. <laughs> we're going to do the worldwide launch. So we're going to get it. Uh, it'll be here on the Cigar Authority. We'll have it uh, for three days, and we'll what do the worldwide say? launch. 500 boxes of each of, of, each the, two each of the two sizes. Their original HBC Broadleaf was phenomenal. Right. It was very good. Great cigar. And you loved it too, right? I loved it. Yeah. Great cigar. So do we have a date on that? End of June. End of June. End of June. I haven't right. smoked a cigar, but I'm sure it's going to be spectacular. Right, because we were talking with him yesterday, yeah. and I told him I appreciate him doing it the last weekend in June, because I'll just be getting back from Europe. Perfect. Oh, I didn't want to miss that one. Great timing. Yeah. I, we can always hold you some, though. You know somebody. <laughs> oh, Hotcakes, yeah. half Corona. That's the Connecticut line. Connecticut. We already have the, the other one. Yeah, That's the Connecticut line. Going, it's going to be a home run. It's a guarantee, right? And uh, selection number one, Connecticut, will be his biggest seller of all cigars, yep. is what I'm going to say that's going to happen there. So he's going to end up killing it. Uh, let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum Cigars. Uh, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> yep. Chopper Copper says hotcakes don't go in the oven. WTF. I know. I know. I didn't say that to him, but I was thinking <laughs> no, of saying I know you were thinking. I was wondering if you I were going to say that. You guys are familiar with the, uh, the old school Batman where Adam the, West? He's, Adam West, yeah, he's being attacked by the shark. And he, in I want to let you know we're 30 minutes behind and we got a lot of shit to go. But go. Move on. <laughs> Before she mastered the art of French cooking, Julia Childs cooked up something a little fishy. Quote, my first recipe was shark repellent that I mixed in a bathtub for the Navy for the men who might get caught in the water, end quote. While working for the precursor to the CIA as a covert operative during World War II, sharks kept unintentionally setting off underwater explosives meant for German U-boats until Childs came up with an inventive recipe that saved the day. That's not only insane, that's asylum. I have nothing to say about yeah, that. Yeah, I All right. The after show is coming up immediately following the show. How to plan a trip, where to eat, what to order, and what to do. Oh. We're going to talk about the PCA trade show, and it's not just about buying cigars. It's buying food. It's going to shows. We're going to go through all of that. But right now, it's time for the Fave Five, and that's brought to you by McAuliffe Cigars. How does this thing work? It's time for the McAuliffe Fave Five, brought to you by you McAuliffe Cigars. Smoke five McAuliffe cigars and be entered to win $300 in gift certificates weekly. That's five $50 gift certificates and an additional five $10 gift certificates for your friends. In December, all winners will be put back and entered to win the grand prize. A trip for two to next year's McAuliffe Open House in Texas. Simply go to McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA for more information. That's McAuliffeCigars.com slash TCA. You so far talked over every single commercial. Sorry, but just want to keep my phone. I don't know what the hell I'm doing up here. All right. Uh, this is like the um, family feud, the family feud that goes on. So I say a question. If you, if you click the button and I haven't finished the question, I'm going to stop right there and you're going to give the answer. And you may, right, may right. want me to finish this question. But Ed, for context, we think he surveys nursing homes for the answers. Okay. Name a word that rhymes with will that associates with doctors. Mr. Jonathan. Bill. Bill comes in first place. Bill rhymes with will. What do you got? I got nothing. I was going to say Bill. That's all you got is Bill? Yeah. Kill. K kill is number three. Kill, skill. No skill. There's no skill there. Well... They, they, would be, they went to school they for a long They would be time. ill. Chill is good. Ill, mm -hmm. ill. And Ill like and Ill. fifth. Chill would be fourth. Kill is third. And 
What would number two be? Hmm. Would be a pill. Pill. Oh, oh, that's a good one. Pill. They all rhyme with Bill. I, uh, Jonathan got I it. I think he is serving <laughs> nursing homes. <laughs> And that's tied in oh so perfectly with it. I got a few more to get to you. La Fleur Dominicana is having its 30th anniversary cigar, just like La Giana Havana is. Mm. Is that a guaranteed buy? You've been doing business with them since 1994. We have, you know, our account number is three. I mean, we're there from the very beginning. There is going to be interest. People are going to want to smoke it. It's going to be expensive. Do so, you know that? Do you know that? Uh, I'm going off past history. All right. I'm basing it upon uh, historical it knowledge. It will not be $12 like the Legion. It will Legiana. not be $12. Oh. If I, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be 30 Really? Right? The 30th for that $30. It only makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. No. Well. There's a money grab, but then again, they did the NFT and they made a freaking million dollars. They did. Right? They did. So. They killed it with that. Yeah. Um, McAuliffe Blue, you said you're in. Altadas is going to be Monte Cristo, $150 Monte Cristo. We're going to have to look at that. I think <laughs> that's, a, that's a no right now unless it really uh, jumps off the page. Uh, another good uh, partnership is with Kristoff. Kristoff has been, it's amazing, 20 years. Remember getting it here the first time, the rustic with all the tobacco on it, and we put it out, and everybody was grabbing it and looking at it? That was 20 years ago. Yeah. Hard to believe. It was right here in this building when that happened. They got rid of the tobacco, which is good because it's yes. a mess. Yes, yeah. B- about time, but okay. Mess. yeah. Uh, is that a for sure, or you got to try it? Um, that's probably a for sure. Yeah. Uh, Christoph PCA. PCA brands, you know, special editions just for PCA thing. Hasn't worked all that well. Some of them do well. Some of them don't. Kristoff has historically done well. Okay. So that'll probably be something that we'll, we'll do or at least look at yeah. with the intention of that. Um, but other brands, it's going to be based on the brand because it hasn't been a, a slam dunk. All right. Mm. Um, Padron Black. Already ordered it. I actually talked to George the other day. There's more coming, but... Not for probably another month. Yeah, it's a guarantee, weeks. though. Whatever we're, they have. Yeah, we're in. It doesn't matter. E.P. Carrillo, Encore Black. This was a surprise to me. <laughs> yeah, you came in the other day and said, we should probably think about getting this. And I said, we already got it. It's gone. <laughs> we got it and sold out. Gone. And I didn't even know we got it, mm. nor did, did we have it. So uh, West Tampa Attic Series. We did really well with the attic before, which turned into the red, and uh, I think that it's going to be something. And they've been very good to great. us, and it, we, the relationship is fantastic. Great. Um, Foundation is doing their uh, Corojo and their Maduro. We've struggled with Ella Wense and Wise Man over the years, and we've yeah. tried. Uh, I have a good relationship with those guys, and we've tried. We do great with their other brands, Tabernacle, Charter Oak, um, but there are some of their lines that we've just struggled with. So this is definitely going to be a smoke it and make a decision based on. Okay. Uh, Roma Craft uh, Timeline. Yeah. Already arrived. Um, it's, it's online right now in a pack. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, it's going to be at the stores this week. It came late in the week, so it didn't make it. But, yes, that's already out. Okay. And the uh, Pennsylvania Broadleaf of Cro-Magnon? We're already in. We're already in, but it has not come in. It has not come in. No, have we tried it? Uh, no, but the timeline is right. the new it's wrapper. just a different size. So the timeline is a different size than that new wrapper. Did you try it? I haven't smoked it yet. No. I brought it home with me to smoke today. Ed, Ed Sullivan's dying to try I it. I know. I'd love to try that. When are you sending them here? Next week. Next week. Okay. United Cigar Dragon Slayer. They'll be showing that at the, at the show. Um, that's the cigar by Artista, the first cigar we smoked, um, and that would be at the United Cigar Booth, um, Connecticut Firecracker. Um, arrived? Yes. Okay, so that's yeah. ready to go? Arrived, started shipping. Uh, it's in the stores. Uh, Lunatic Firecracker, that'll be the limited release for 4th of July. Yep. Um, is the United one been announced? Yeah, you announced it. I did? United Connecticut? United Connecticut? Yeah, it's been announced. Okay, it's good. Announced. It's out there on the market. Gold Star, and here is the La Giana 30th that we did. So that is uh, stuff that we're looking at. We're going to look at everything. Anyway, we do pretty good in three and a half days that we end up going to every booth. No more half day this year, just three I know. days. And that may play a role. Nah, two, two days will be done. Really? Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, all right. He's usually pretty good at it. Well, then. isn't that really because of the short turnaround between the last trade show and this trade show? So, so many people really didn't have the opportunity to come up with something new, or they held off on last year, and it, their new thing came out this year. That's some of it, but that's not really going to affect the time that it takes us to hit the show. Again, it comes down to preparation. I'm, re I'm going to be ready. There's no advance hour either. That went away, too. The first that's hour. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> He's not worried at all. No. no. Because he's prepped. Mm -hmm. He's prepped and ready to go. And honestly, trouble happens at the end. He usually leaves after the third day. And, and they get to he you. Take, and he, yeah, he takes the red eye out the night before or whatever. Yeah, usually and, that last day. And I'm, and I'm done doing the red eye. I, and I recommend he doesn't do it either and stay another night. But he says, no, I'm going to go. He doesn't mind it. I hate it. I just can't catch up. With sleep, I just imagine. it kills me. I can't sleep on the plane. Yeah, but I'd rather be, you know, get back and jump yeah. back into the routine. So on that last day, I'm left to my own devices, and it usually is is a bad mm -hmm. thing. So that goes away too. So you can sleep well. Usually before I leave, I say, okay, don't do anything with this. Don't do anything with that. Yeah, I just can't. Control but then myself. if somebody cries, it's a I know. Wild card. Well, I can't stop it. <laughs> no, yeah. it's out of yeah. my control. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, more with Ed Santa Maria. He's the biggest buyer in the business. Plus, we have a prize to give away for the best email of the week and lots more. We're live in the Toscano Soundstage. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Introducing Blackened Cigars, M81 by Drew Estate. A dark, bold, and unapologetic cigar collaboration. My job is all about taste. So when James mentioned he wanted to create an exclusive cigar, I was stoked. Like Metallica, Drew Estate has some of the most hardcore fans out there. I've known Rob Dietrich for years. And when he approached me to collaborate on this, we couldn't be more excited. I mean Metallica, Black and & Whiskey, and Drew Estate. What could be a better passion project? We all came up with a vision of what a blackened M81 cigar would look and taste like. M81 Metallica formed in 1981, as you can see right here, just so I don't forget. <laughs> and now you won't forget because it's on this. We needed to craft a cigar unlike anything in our portfolio. One that would take cigar fans on the deepest, darkest, heaviest journey into the mystical world of Maduro. Full bodied with notes of espresso, leather, and dark chocolate. A wrapper a binder, a filler that is all Maduro, and they are all grown in separate places. You talk about a heavy leaf cigar. This is beyond passion. This shit is straight amplification. Blackened Cigar M81 by Drew Estate is bold, rich, and powerful enough to satisfy the most experienced cigar connoisseur, but also balanced that new cigar lovers can enjoy its tantalizing smoking experience as well. Blackened Cigars M81 by Drew Estate. Since 1989, Nestor and Mariana Miranda have subscribed to one family, one vision, with Miami Cigar & Company. Since their inception, the Miranda family has fulfilled their dream by creating some of the best cigars on the market today. Cigars like Nestor Miranda Special Selection, which is produced in Nicaragua, featuring an oily Nicaraguan Habano wrapper that the Cigar Authority named their 2019 Cigar of the Year. And the Don Lino Africa, which celebrates Nestor's love of big game animals. These soft box-pressed cigars feature an authentic Cameroon binder, which creates delicious nuances and crescendos. Miami Cigar invites you to try these brands at your favorite tobacconist. You only have one life. How will you live yours? Experience the rich tradition of the legendary H. Upman brand with the latest addition to their iconic 1844 line. The H. Upman 1844 Añejo uses a rich, well-balanced blend of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican tobaccos and an extra-aged wrapper that offers a deep aroma with a bold finish. The H. Upman 1844 in Yeho is sure to please adult smokers looking for a delicious, handmade, premium smoke that is aged to perfection. Surgeon General warning, tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. HVC 
Ashley. Hot cakes. Anybody here want to smoke some hot cakes? Cakes. Hot cakes. HVC's got cigars for sale. You can buy them in a single or a box of 25 HVC hot cakes. They really satisfy selling cakes. Hot cakes. You get them from the cigar man. He sells cigars, one or the other. If you smoke HVC, you'll never buy another selling cakes. Hot cakes, you get them from the cigar man. HVC hot cakes are premium cigars. Featuring a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, Nicaraguan Corojo binder grown in Jalapa, and Nicaraguan filler tobaccos, including a leaf of Corojo from 2006 Maduro, which makes this blend pop. Expect rich notes of dark chocolate, espresso, and spice. It's so friggin' good. Selling cakes, hot cakes, you get them from the cigar man. Hello, this is Ernesto Perez Carrillo from EP Carrillo Cigars. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority the United Podcast Network. And we are back, powered by the West Tampa Tobacco Fun Company, featuring West Tampa Black, White, and Red. West Tampa Cigars is a passion with a purpose. And passionate Ed Santa Maria, the buyer for two guys, is here with us. We're talking about the trade show, getting ready to buy. I got a few more to get to with, with Ed to see if he's interested. Uh, E.P. Carrillo, they, they have something new coming that you may or may not be interested in now? Uh, we have- just talked about that, Encore. This is uh, Artista. Oh, oh, okay. Artista HOF. Hall of Fame. Yes. Hall of Fame. We do well with it. We've had David here for events. Yep. Um, oh, you can call him David. 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 Yeah, we're tight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> tight. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, it's something we definitely have to look at. Okay. And that and this is a, a Artista F-A-L-U. Falu? Yeah. We'll, I don't we'll, know. we'll figure out that. Uh, Topper. Chris Topper. Old cigar company. Maybe the oldest cigar company in America now. They're saying they actually got two years older. Did you see that I article? I did. Yeah, you told me about huh. it, too. Yeah. Um, 1894. They thought they were 1896 till they found some papers, and uh, didn't that work out just perfect for them? Yeah. Um, new cigar, um, handmade. Yeah. New yeah. nice cigar called handmade. 1894. Looks beautiful. We'll see. You haven't tried I'm it. looking forward to trying it. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Um, Drew Estate, blackened S84. Blackened did well for us, right? It did, yeah. So yeah, and they just announced the S84. It looks like it's going to be a little lighter, um, kind of appealing to a broader market, so we'll see. Was that the cigar in the pack that it was, nobody yeah. knew? That was it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I tried it. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, it was good. It, was it was good. Wouldn't, wouldn't be what I thought it would have been by any no, means. No, I thought it would have been something else, too. Yeah. Um, Rojas, they have uh, 10th anniversary. 10 years for Rojas. Mm. Noel Rojas. Uh, the king of the small king. engaged cigars. Yes. Something to try? Uh, we're in. We're in. 10th anniversary, we're in, and Cinco de Mayo Street Taco, we're in. When you say you're in, it's already ordered. Already ordered. Huh. So we don't have to even go by there. We'll go by and we'll say go hi. By anyway. say hi. Yeah. But they, they said if you'd like to order it in advance. Or they wanted to make sure that they took care of some of their accounts. That Isn't that nice? That so that that's well good. With, so. All right. Um, Big Sky. Do they have anything new? Cause we, Not that I'm aware of. All right. Uh, when they were here, didn't they say they just got... The packaging or something? Didn't they have a tackle box packaging? Oh, but right. it, no they new were, cigars. They said could, they were working on a few different things. Yeah. They may even change some of their existing packaging, too. Right. Um, All right. How about the Cigar Authority anniversary cigar that's coming? Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you buying it, that it, one? I've it, seen it. Is it the sickest one yet? We did a Lancero. We did uh, Fat Fingers. This may be, without spilling the beans on it, it's a April little 6th, unique. April 6th, um, it, it seems if, if we can't get something, we try to get stuff, to buy stuff that sells, <laughs> but we try to make things that should not sell at all. Right. We don't do that. You do That's that. That's me. You, he, like, he likes you the get challenge. get off on this time. He likes the challenge. I got to tell you, Ed is my partner on this. <laughs> that we sit there and Oh, goes, that's perfect. Yeah. Ed, you guys remember that this was said. Ed is Dave's partner on this. Yeah. Not this Ed, for the record. Ed, Ed <laughs> Sullivan sits with me, and he goes, that is sick enough to be good. I like it. That is good. Let's yeah. do it. Before you see what this is, everybody, it wasn't me. It was that Ed. <laughs> I thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ed, as long as we have you here, what's the last day to add to the care package? It's the 20th. 
The 20th. Before the 20th. All right. That's when everything processes, all the credit cards process, and then we pack everything up and get it out, usually by like the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. Yeah, he gets all these things done also, not just the buyer. <laughs> he did the cigar school. You did yep, cigar yep. school. We fulfilled all that. And that went real good. Really well. And we're talking about possibly making this available now? Well, it is available right now, so I hope we're not talking about it. I okay. Hope I hope we're doing it. <laughs> so we can, this is it. It's on there. So if you, di- if you weren't part of Cigar School and you say, I want to be part of Cigar School, yep. you can do it anytime you want now because it's a recorded thing. And we'll send you the package and the link and you can smoke along with Dave and Jonathan and do the whole school. And already done anytime you want to do it. And I recommend it. And you should go to twoguyscigars.com. Twoguyscigars.com. There should be a link on the cigarauthority.com as well. Okay. And if, if you went on the two guys, how, what would you search for? Uh, you can look for uh, Cigar School in the drop-down menu. Or okay. just search for Cigar School. Okay. And it should come up. All right. So uh, that's available because we got lots of emails and stuff asking. I wasn't able to do it. I want to do it. You should do it again. Well, we recorded it, and it's there, and that is the version. If you already did it, it's all set. You've done it. If you want to do it again and have friends over and turn it into something, by all means, uh, you can do it. Yep. And we'll send you the package and the link, and you can set up your own cigar school. All right. We've got a prize to give away. And this week's best email of the week is brought to you by the folks at Onyx. This week, they are giving away a money clip, a lighter, a cutter, a koozie, and a hat. I thought we... We're done with this. This is the, the last, last one. This is the last one. Then we'll go to something new next week. Okay. And Ed handles us too. So you, he does a lot of things. <laughs> yes, Again, he does. big head, but a uh, <laughs> lot of hats. A lot of hats. And the following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And Dan writes, I had a blast on Friday participating in Cigar School. There we go. Mm. A lot of great information and, as always, entertaining. He wins. I hope you will Sorry. consider doing additional interactive events like Cigar School. Maybe cigar pairings similar to the Camacho jerky and barbecue sauce pairings. Mm. Two guys could sell the group of cigars, and then people could go out on their own and pick up the food, drink, etc. that is needed to pair with the cigars. Thanks for everything. And that's Dan. Interactive shows. Hmm. Episodes and things like that. Would it, would it have to? Could it be our regular show and it happens, or would it must be? Well, it could be the regular show, and it, it could be if it was a jerky pairing. We could certainly send we have jerky, jerky out. We, we could put. We have it, the best jerky. By the way, we could put it in the care package. How well does jerky sell online? Not so much. No, mm-hmm. no. We sell cigars, so yeah. <laughs> Branching out to but jerky is a little bit of a stores, stretch. It but. does good because they try it, but. Mm-hmm. Try a uh, beef jerky someday. There's, there's a bacon jerky, too. The beef jerky is outstanding. I like the bacon. The bacon jerky yeah. is very good like as well. Bacon. But D- Dave doesn't dig on the swine. Yeah. All right. JR from Canada writes through the contact us page. Dear Cigar Authority, specifically Dave. Okay. Despite it being legal in my country, oh, I have cut go. back on <laughs> marijuana consumption in order to smoke more, more premium cigars. cigars. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I am spending 10 times more on cigars than Chiba. That's the weeds. Mm. Okay. Uh, and buying cigars by the box, no less. Great. Cigar sales are up. Marijuana sales are down. For you, yes, good. Mr. Jonathan, please stop making ridiculous and erroneous statements about smoking a single joint over several sessions because of the strength and character of modern-day marijuana. Mm. That is nonsense. A joint is typically smoked down to the roach in one sitting, possibly two. Don't be such a narc. Otherwise, (laughs) love the show. (laughs) Wow. There we uh, go. Take, so he's kind of on my side on this. He, he's the first, he, he he's said the first one. The exact mm-hmm. opposite. He's yeah, very he's, tongue in cheek against you. Yeah. Oh, this is. Oh, yeah. oh, he's making fun of me. Yes. He's absolutely making fun <laughs> of you, both of us. Don't take what the exact words on there. But he's joking. He, there's, there's sarcasm. This thing called sarcasm. Oh, sarcasm. sarcasm. Yes. Ah. I even, I, my lips were dripping with it as I was reading. Really? It, you still missed See, it. See, I took it for real. <laughs> it's a chocolatey <laughs> outside with sarcasm on the inside. Oh. All right. Sure. And our final email, and this one gets my vote. Gary writes through the contact us page of the cigarauthority.com. Couple ideas about the care package. I've been a happy Cigar Authority Care Package Prime member for a long time now. So many times when I get the monthly email about my credit card charge, I'm sorry, my credit card being charged, I think about why I didn't add on an order to get free shipping. And then I sort of forget to do it the following month. 
What do you think about sending out an email maybe a week or so ahead of the care package shipping to remind members of the add-on free shipping thing and maybe even offer a little special to the care package members only? How about we say it on the show and say add on the thing and we tell yeah. you and it's and there we also, every month. We put it on the postcard that gets in inside, yeah, the, which I don't right. think anybody really reads, but so there's right. a postcard in there. Listen, so, they, Gary, you're, li- you're thinking about it right now. It's uh, before the 20th. Right now it's the 16th. So just... Even if it's yeah. Monday and it's the 18th, you know, do it now. Put it in your phone. Yeah, you a lot of people it. have a smartphone and they but have reminders. But you can reminders. do it the 21st. When it pops into your head, just do it. We're going we're gonna to take care of it for you. We're going to put it aside. We're going to make sure it goes. He's, he's asking us to remind him. We're, we're yeah. going to do all the hard work. All you so, have to do and is you, And you pick him. You, 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 you add to this and Mr. Sarcasm, I got to give it to number one. You got Sarcasm as number two. That's uh, JR. Yeah, which I didn't that, that upset sarcasm. you. And, and Gary wants me to remind him, I'm, a busy, I'm busier than you. Certainly Ed is, which is asking Ed to remind him. Yeah. So I got to go with Dan, who says, come up with some interactive. Yeah, I would like him. And, and he gave an example of it, too. So I'm almost tempted to give him a penance for that. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so yeah. now you got Jonathan picking um, the last guy, Gary. I'm picking number one. And it's up to you two guys to figure out who it's, the winner is. It's number one. Good. I don't have to say anything then. Yes, it's number one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Did there, well, number one, I already won. I don't have to vote. Dan, you win. Jonathan will take care of that uh, when he Jonathan can. Jonathan and Ed will take care of that. Oh, because Ed has to handle that yes. also. I copy Ed on the email. So, yep. so you don't actually do anything, man. <laughs> you send it to him also. You do a, 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 a Gary. He's the middleman. Yeah. He's the middleman in this equation. Don't but you want but he does follow. He does a great job following through. I'll give him credit. Mm. We've got to take some things off his plate. Like, here you go. Here's the guy's thing. Send him the pack. I usually just pass it on to the next person. Well, you do it, too. To be honest. Yeah. This Dina, is just a Dina, pass Dina off, runs, ash off, Dina pass runs off. the order. Which, you want to explain the pass off, ash off? I shouldn't do it right before the show because we utilize it during the show. Pass oh, off. I got it. I coined the term. What is pass off, ash oh, off? Oh, you don't even know. No. All right. Have I the, missed this? The Newman brothers are the kings of this. So you go up and you say hi to Bobby. Yeah. And Bobby talks to you for about 35 seconds. He reaches out and grabs someone that's walking by and says, Steve, do you know Mr. Jonathan? And you're shaking hands with Steve. Hi, Steve. I'm yes, from they Two do. Guys Smoke yes, Shop. Yes, they do. And you're from where? <laughs> and they're gone. And you it's look and there's genius. no Bobby Newman. It is great. <laughs> it is great. I never realized that. And they I, both yeah. do it. They and both I, do it. Yeah. They're, they're really they're great masters. at it. And I think to myself in the moment, why is he introducing me to this random person? And that's why. And that's yeah. it. It's so great. I get it. And I've tried it, and it works, and it's really... Yeah, usually it's to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's really good. Hey, Ed. Hey, you <laughs> know you Bill Ed? over yeah. here. Oh. Boom, and I'm gone. All oh, right. Oh, that's a lie. You don't know their name in the first place. No, no. <laughs> hey, I'm, you. I'm terrible at names, by the way, so hi, how you doing? It will be it. Um, the Stars Review. The Stars are out there, and uh, they did a review this week. Ed Sullivan, what'd they do? The Stars are burning bright. Yes. This week, they did the Montosa Natural Toro, which, by okay. the way, I, I thought that should have won for Cigar of the Year. I like the Natural better than the Maduro. Oh. Believe okay. it or not, All sometimes right. it goes that way. They say it delights the palate with a medley of flavors. Sweetness reminiscent of vanilla and cream soda. Here we go. You like cream I'll soda. I'll agree with that. Right? I love it. Notes of hay and barnyard. So you get some of the Connecticut flavors yeah. in there. Uh, some cedar notes later in the cigar, along with a, a touch of white pepper. Not much. Maybe just sprinkle yeah. a little bit of the white pepper. And they rated this, I think it's a great rating when you consider the price, 89.97. There we go. It's Couldn't close quite to get there. Almost. It, it is what it is. And they're not bad with the strength, I think. 3.63. Okay. That's pretty good. I think they nailed it there. Yeah. Can we just yeah. round up to 90 and just say 90? No. Well, just because we're doing We're it very it. precise. We're not spinning this in any no. way. Right. Yep. And um, that's as close as you're going to get to 90 with 20 well, people, right? 89.99 would be closer. Yeah. Is that possible to happen with 20 people? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Ed's the mathematician. Yeah, we'd have to do the math on that. Oh, we, we don't have time for all that. No. No, we don't. But uh, great cigar. And again, the price, you're talking a $7 cigar there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a It's home a great run. cigar. Um, okay. It is time for the Classic 3-Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. <laughs> 
Hey, what about the 65 Mustang? Classic, no doubt about it. It's in the hole! That's Caddyshack, and that's a classic. Coffee, too cream, too sugar. Coffee regular, that's a classic. Classic cigars are true value cigars, using a classic Dominican blend and available in Connecticut, Cuban, Maduro, or Cameroon wrappers. Totally classic. Cheeseburger in Paradise. Classic. Bird vs. Magic. Classic. Classic cigars have five sizes for every walk of life. From boardrooms to barrooms, make your next meeting a classic. Make classic cigars part of your American comfort. One cut, one light, and experience classic cigars. So someday I need to play the making of that commercial. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Jonathan loves that. I love that. Today is March 16th. Ed, you know how this works. Ed Sullivan goes first because he's the winner. I have four questions, no tiebreakers. We'll start with Ed Sullivan. Born today, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, American comedian. Martin and Lewis, the MDA telethon. He was born in New in Newark, New Jersey today. What year? Um, I believe that was 1921. 21, he says, Mr. Jonathan. 1936. 36, and Ed Santa Maria. 1926. 26. If somebody gets it exact, it is two points. We have two points to Ed Santa Maria. Whoa. How to start it off, Ed Santa Maria. Uh, and if he wins, he has to come back. <laughs> <laughs> He'll throw it right now, yeah. so don't, don't oh, put that right. on him. Um, on to Mr. Jonathan. Born today, Chuck Woolery. Ooh. Chuck Woolery. TV game show host, The Love Connection, 2 and 2. Do you remember that at all? Mm. I'll be well, back in 2 and 2. Wasn't he original Wheel of Fortune? Maybe. Chuck Woolery. Mm. Chuck, he's, they're saying yes in the audience. Chuck Woolery, born today, Mr. Jonathan. What uh, year? 1944. 44, mm. Ed Sullivan. Ed Santa Maria. 1942. 42. I also had 42. 42. Ooh. Everybody's over. No points will be Is awarded. It 41? Oh. It's 40. Ah. Oh. On to Ed Santa Maria. Born today, Nancy Wilson. Nancy Wilson, hot. rock guitarist, hot. Barracuda. Uh, what about love? Born in San Francisco, California today. What year was Nancy Wilson born? 1957. 57, he says. I think it was 1962. 62. 1955. 55. Everybody is over. 54. She's, she's old. 54. John's really good at this game. So we have one question left. Yeah, it's Ed the Santa only Maria one on the board. He has two points. Zero, zero. <laughs> it could be a total shutout. Yep. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening here. Who is this? It's uh, back to Ed. Uh, yeah. Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, born today, American rapper, public enemy. Um, that's not a person. It isn't. Public enemy and reality star. Oh, it's Flavor Flav. Life. Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav, born in Roosevelt, Long Island, New York today. Flavor Flav. I'm sticking with 1962. 62. 64. 64. I'm going to go with 1958. Yeah, boy. For the point, 59. Man. Three to nothing. All right. Total shutout. So you're off and next totally week. totally redeemed. You don't have to come back until the following week since you'll be away. That's right. You can't definitely no. be, be back for the... Uh, so uh, we've done a terrible job about talking about this cigar. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. The construction is outstanding. The flavor is unfrosted cupcake, w dusted with white pepper, but it's just the, the crunchy edges that make contact with the muffin pan. That little crunch that you Do get you on the Do you know cupcake. the muffin man? The, the muffin, muffin man. man. The you? muffin man. Do you know the muffin man? The muffin man? Yeah, the muffin man. The have you, this uh, is La Giana 30th quite. anniversary. Have you put pepper on a frosted cupcake before? It's unfrosted. Unfrosted. Oh, unfrosted. Have you ever have you put, put pepper, pepper on an unfrosted, unfrosted cupcake? cupcake? You cupcake. haven't? No, I've done some crazy things, but no. You put salt All right, in maybe not. Mix. Maybe not a cupcake, but I have had pepper on a, a pancake before. Pepper on a pancake? Mm. Pepper on a pancake. Was it a hot cake? Is there a song to go with that? Pepper There's, on a pancake? I don't think so. <laughs> Accessory buying. Yes. How do you do that? <sighs> it's a little more difficult. Are you trying to buy enough cutters for the year? Or are you trying to buy enough for a quarter? Or on a the stuff that's proven, yes. So on the stuff that's proven, we're buying for, it depends on the deal. 
Yeah. If I know we're going to sell it, we'll buy it for a longer period of time. If it's something that we're trying out, but I know we're going to be able to get, maybe we go a little heavier based on you buy in what we think. Butane gas, you know, it's oh yeah, be no, we're buying out. that for a year. Yeah. Also, yeah. if the price is right, it's correct. Gonna, correct. Ed's very good about mining data from the store, so he'll have conversations when he comes by. Uh, not just what's selling, but what are we? What lighters, for example, do we have to work on? Mm -hmm. Because those have a ah. higher fail rate, and they may not end up being damaged out. But if X Y Z lighter keeps coming back, and it has to keep being adjusted and, and tooled around with, that's probably not the best one for us. And we we should maybe move selling on. Selling it is one thing, but what's the? Is it coming back? Correct. Yeah. How about new stuff? When like, I was very close last year of the the house. Remember the? Oh yeah. The, the, uh, the smoking smoking house. Oh yes, yeah, we were very close on that. That's just a big ticket item. That's so that's a whole different category. Yeah, because that's not you know accessories are easy from a standpoint of it's twenty bucks. It's a cutter. It's twenty bucks. It looks cool. It works cool. Let's try that. This is a cool thing, but it was it was a, it was no place to place it. And it was. I, mean, I, it I was, had to come down here and measure the height of the ceiling and stuff. And I go, it's just not going to work. I called your brother. I called construction people. We just can't do it. I'd like one in my house yes. or in well, the office. Or yeah, uh, the warehouse. You could yeah. have a place to smoke. I would love that. But you don't wow. have space for it. Oh, I've thought about that, yeah. <laughs> the warehouse. Yeah. And put it down towards the very end where the door, the door is. Why not put it in his office? Yeah, that's where I would put it. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. That I didn't even think about. So it would become your office, essentially. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And yes. then it's two layers before people right. can so, get to you. So it would be almost the whole office because I need to leave room for the hot tub and the pool table. Right. right? <laughs> so we'd have to make sure we plan the room out. We need a bigger warehouse. <laughs> yes, we've we only do. been there since November last year. And uh, Steve Saka said it the other day. He came in and said, it's way too small. I yeah. said, it wasn't last <laughs> November. We're very good at filling things up. Yes. Very good we, at We look at these big things and say there's no place to go with it. This is La Gianna Havana 30th anniversary. You're saying available soon after the trade show. Mm -hmm. After the trade show. Okay. So obviously we have it, but we're going to wait so everybody has it. At the we same. have some. Oh, okay. We have, that's why it's not available yet to the masses. Okay. But we have the box that's here. Okay. That's it. Thanks, Ed Santa Maria, Thank for you. doing this. I think it was good. It was something for uh, everybody to see what a cigar buyer does. It's, it's not all uh, easy and fun and... You know, well, I mean, we joke around and say we smoke the shit so you don't have to, but Ed really smokes the <laughs> shit. Really do. Yeah, he smokes more shit we than really anybody do. else uh, and buys more cigars than anybody else. It's Ed Santa Maria and uh, you manufacturers, that's the guy. It's, it's not me, so uh, you can wine and dine me all you want. If I were you, that's the guy I would. They're still going to forget this, too, so it's good. They'll forget this. Speaking of good. wining and dining, what's coming up on the after on show? On the after show, we're going to talk about wining and dining and what we're going to do at the trade show with a go, what to eat, what to see, what to do. Uh, next week on the Cigar Authority, Dave and Ed are away. That's me and Ed Santa Maria. We're going to the trade show. That leaves Ed Sullivan and Mr. Jonathan here. They will have Dan Davison from the Ash Holes join us, along with a new brand owner who's been in the industry for a long time and about to make a comeback. Until then, you've been listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you learned something today which makes you the Cigar Authority. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners, or